right, good evening. We're live from Kelly Automotive Park as the Butler Blue Sox are going to host the Chillicothe Paints for the second night in a row, third game in two days against these Paints. And uh, we swept a doubleheader yesterday. I'm Jaron Steele, joined by Joel Norman. And with that doubleheader sweep yesterday, Blue Sox improved to 20-17, and 17 and they uh, improved, moved into second place in the Prospect League East. Yeah, I was going to say the biggest two takeaways was, yeah, bumping up to second place after, you know, the doubleheader sweep. And, of course, Patrick Ferguson tying the Blue Sox all-time lead in history for most home runs in a season now at 11. So yeah. two huge takeaways from yesterday. But I think the big one especially, like you talked about, moving up to the second spot. And, and we talked about this off-air beforehand. That's the thing about doubleheaders. You just want to grab one because coaches, players, they hate them. They're grueling. But – Blue Sox found a way to grab both, and boy, that puts them in the driver's seat going into today's game. Yeah, and, and they're going to turn to a, a local guy tonight, Alex Stobert, a right-hander from Saxonburg. Went to Knock High School. They played here uh, at Kelly Automotive Park for, for their home field, and so he has a lot of good memories and a lot of good um, you know, vibes and, and everything on this mound. He, he was part of a state championship team a couple years ago. And uh, he's making his second start first here at home, second one against Chillicothe. He did very good last last weekend down there. He did back on July 6th. That Chillicothe, as you mentioned, six innings pitched, allowed two runs, both earned on six hits. Only walked one batter and struck out four over that outing. So it was a great start to his season. That was his first appearance as a member of the Blue Sox. And like you said, it's, you know, it's a hometown guy. And this really puts a whole new meaning on home field advantage for a guy who's pitched here before, used to it. Got to be a nice moment for him, though, taking the mound again. Well, we'll give you the blues, uh, the paints lineup, I beg your pardon. Uh, they come in tonight 19 and 19. You got Neil Lambert leading off, wearing number 16, followed by number 5, Dallas Hall. The three hitter will be number 15, Chad Roberts, followed by number 12, Tyler Cowles in the cleanup spot. The DH will be number 17, Dalton Bollinger, batting fifth. First pitch is outside, and that goes in tonight at 634. Pick, Tanner Picnic will bat in the sixth spot, wearing number 34. Number 35, Peyton Newsom will bat seventh. Line drive, base hit here up the middle by Lambert to lead it off. And to finish off the order, Ben Aslett will bat eighth and wear number two. And Drake Peggs will round out the order wearing number 26. And their pitcher will be Jacob Niggemeyer. And we'll talk more about him in the bottom half. Umpires tonight, Drew Shields behind home plate. Mark Schmidt is on the bases. And defensively for the Blue Sox, Gulakowski is behind the plate. Ferguson at first, Maglione at second, Gonzalez at third, Parks at short, Carew in left, Merkonja in center, and Scott in right. Here's Dallas Hall. And first pitch is low to Stobert, or from Stobert to Hall. He might be a little bit of nerves from the big righty, making his first home start here. Uh, probably as large of a crowd as he's ever had here to, to pitch in front of. Throw, uh, throw from Golikowski on stolen base attempt goes out in the center field. Luckily for the Blue Sox, Lambert uh, had, had a hard time getting up and really didn't have a chance to advance to third. Yeah, Lambert didn't get really get a good look at that ball. Came in there looking down. I don't think he heard the ball going back. Heard it bounce off the glove. But uh, nonetheless, staying there at second base. Kind of a, a do bullet dodge there for the Blue Sox. Mm -hmm. 2-0 is there for a called strike. Good fastball from Stobert. As I mentioned, he went to knock. He was part of a two-headed monster tandem with uh, Kolshinsky on, on their way to winning the state championship and Whippeal championship. Ooh, got him with an off-speed pitch there. Now makes count even at two. Stobert goes to Tallahassee Community College this past season as a freshman in eight. Starts at a 6.20 ERA, so over 45 innings. So not, not the year he wanted, but again, only your freshman year. 2-2, two, two, swing and a miss. Hall chases it. Gulakowski's going to have to go to first to complete the strikeout. He'll do that. One away. Strikeout potential definitely there for Stobert as well, as I was mentioning at Tallahassee. And those 45 innings, 33 strikeouts. Strikeouts per nine innings, 6.6. .6. So he's going to get a few, fair amount of strikeouts when he's out there on the mound. Well, he's got one down here. Here's the left-handed hitting Chad Roberts from Northern Kentucky. And here's a pause. 
by Stepperty comes home. Hard hit grounder foul down the first base line. Roberts hitting 310 this season. He's been with the Paints before. He was with them in 2015. So, you know, a little bit of experience. Wasn't with them last summer, though. Stebbert slowing the pace down here a little bit. And here's the 0-1. Chopper off of Robert's foot. And so now Stebbert's got him where he wants him. Stebbert's got a long delivery, too, from what we're watching. You notice how it seems like he's looking at that runner at second base for as long as he possibly can. He's got his leg kicked, and then he looks forward, shifting his head. 180 degrees, really, about there, too. But kind of just interesting to watch how he does that. Part, part, part of that probably is because he does have that long de delivery, so he's got to look the runner back as long as he can before he comes home. And he gets a strikeout. Another chase from a paint as Roberts tried to go golf at one, but it comes up empty. Low in the zone and inside. It's a tough one to hit, but it's that strikeout pitch you're going for. Good stuff from Stobert there. Yeah, he, after giving up the leadoff single, he's got back-to-back -back K's. Now Tyler Cowles. He's ready to go. And here's pitch. It's outside. And maybe this is where you talk about him settling down a bit, too. Like you talked about, you're giving up that single and then the runner getting to second on the stolen base. You know, maybe there's nerves not quite there as much anymore. You get those back-to-back -back strikeouts to help your confidence. A little number of foul. Yeah, not got some good crowds here back in the day, but they rarely got crowds this size mm -hmm. for their games. And so, you know, uh, last weekend down in Chillicothe, I think he pitched in front of 2,000 people. How so about that? Yeah, that's the beauty of summer ball. It is. Especially when you play at a community college. I'm sure they get some fans down there, but it's nothing like you would get you know, one of these games. 1-1 one, one is low. And it, it goes across the board. I mean, even like small D1s, D2s, those guys aren't getting, you know, 1,500 people coming out to their games. This is like a minor league feel for a lot of these guys. It is. That's, that's a good way to put it, too. You know, it's, it's as much as these rosters change, too, Jaron, I think it's worth noting, too, that, you know, we talk about that consistent fan base here. It's tougher for a community college to kind of have that because they're going to be a little bit smaller. You're not going to have as, as many alumni. And then when you've got people like this who are residents, that changes it. Ground ball to third. Gonzalez has it. Throw is low, but picked by Ferguson. And the inning. Now after a leadoff single, Stobert settles down, gets three in a row. No runs, one hit, no errors, and a man left. So now we'll give the Blue Sox lineup tonight brought to you by the Butler Armco Credit Union. Leading off will be number 17, the left fielder Ben Carew, followed by number 22, the catcher Brady Gulikowski. In the three spot will be number six, the right fielder Calvin Scott. And the cleanup spot is the designated hitter tonight, number 19, James Meeker. Hitting fifth will be the third baseman, number seven, Ray Gonzalez. And it will be the first baseman, number 41, Patrick Ferguson. In the seventh spot is the center fielder, number three, Stefan Merconja. And in the eighth spot, shortstop, number 13, Paven Parks. And hitting ninth will be the second baseman, number 21, Damian Maglione. And they're going to go up against... A guy they saw just a couple weeks ago from Marshall University, a junior, Jacob Niggemeyer. Yeah, seven appearances, six starts this season. He's 2-0 with a 4.07 ERA that's spanning 35 and a third innings pitched. And you mentioned last time you saw the Blue Sox back on June 22nd. They got the best of him in that one. He tossed four innings, giving up five runs, four earned on seven hits, struck out one and walked two. Did not get a decision on that one, nonetheless. But, you know, like we said, this is a guy not too long ago the, the Blue Sox have seen, and they're looking for a similar result against him today. It's a guy who was rated fairly highly coming out of high school, started at Ohio State, was actually drafted out of high school in the 28th round by the Chicago Cubs back in 2014, but he's gone to three different colleges in three years. And, you know, things haven't gone the way he's wanted, but, you know, this is a guy who, based on what we're seeing, might have some decent stuff. So something to keep an eye on today for the Blue Sox. Well, and defensively behind Niggemeyer for the paints, it's Picnic behind home plate. Roberts at first, Peggs at second, Aslett at third, Lambert at short, Cowles in left, Howell in center, and Newsom in right. 
And here's Ben Carew, ready to go. He'll take a pitch above the belt. Blue Sox in their Yankee throwbacks tonight. Curveball outside. Interesting you mentioned that curveball there because right out of high school it was talked about Nick Meyer only had two pitches, fastball and a slider, so something to watch today. That ball's popped up on the infield. Peg's calling everybody off. He has it for the first out. That'll bring in Brady Gulikowski. Who, if he has a good night tonight, could become the fourth Blue Sox player to get into the 300 category. Well, he's, that's, oh, that's a good start. He's, he singles out in the left field. He's hitting 297 coming into today. And that should put him up yeah. a little bit with as few at-bats as these players really have. He has 111 coming into tonight. Okay, yeah, barely got the words out of your mouth there, and then you yeah. know, dumps a single on the left. Yeah, <laughs> first pitch swinging goes the other way. And that brings up Calvin Scott, who had a ringing double down the, the right field line in game one of yesterday's doubleheader. He checks the swing, called strike anyway. And peek over it first. Here's the 01. Hard hit ball, but that'll hook well foul and out of the stadium. We can always talk about with Scott. We said they bat him third consistently, but with his speed when he gets on, that's that's going to make things interesting. That's 20 stolen bases on the season, still leading the prospect league. Something to watch for for him, but it's a guy who just gets on base for this team. That's why you love putting him number three. Well, he takes a close one there. Get makes one and two. That's good pitch from Niggemeyer because uh, you know, you're 0-2 there, you might get a chase, but Calvin Scott's not one to chase too often. Throw over to first, and Golikowski's back. That's what you look for in that number three hitter, is a guy who's not going to be chasing anything too wild either. You know, you just get him to have a good at bat, like you're talking about. Ooh, he does get him to chase here, and that's the first strikeout of the ball game. Looked like he was geared up fastball, and that <laughs> curveball come in and just... Way out in the front. Yeah, Scott looking, like you said, for something else, but instead you got a pitch you didn't really like as much. But yeah, just as we're talking about, I'm not chasing anything right yeah. outside there. It just slid away from yeah. him. The old announcer's jinx. And now with two away, here is James Meeker taking a ball. James pitched game one of the doubleheader yesterday, won six and a third of the seven inning game, got the win, and then went out and played third base in game two. Uh, so you talk about a guy with the uh, – He's just an absolute gamer, playing but playing a doubleheader, starting uh, on the mound and then moving into the into the field of play. That's impressive versatility. That's what you love from these college guys, like we talked about. I mean, just as a college student has to find as many tools to make themselves valuable to the world, you're going to see a lot of college players who can pitch or you can play in the field too, as you and I have always talked about. So that's just what makes the sport. It's what makes college ball so fun. Is and there's so many guys who can do both, and Meeker, a great example of that yesterday. Yeah, he fouled one off there. One, one count. Here's the pitch. It's a bouncer. Good block by Picnic. Lukowski stays put. Meeker's average coming in tonight, sitting at 303. Was as high as 380 as recently as June 27th, but on a bit of a slide lately. Oh, hard hit ball to deep right center. And that ball is gone. A home run. For Meeker, I believe that's his first of the summer. Boy, he smokes that ball out of here over the right center fence. That's his first as a member of the Blue Sox. Actually, last summer didn't hit any either, so a nice way to do it. And what a great couple of days now for James Meeker. Two nothing Blue Sox, and yet Meeker. <laughs> that was a great swing. He just absolutely ball to deep right center. It was a no doubter. You knew right, right off away. the bat. Right off the bat. I was trying to shut my mouth about him struggling before that ball got <laughs> out of here. <laughs> well, here's Gonzalez. He had a home run just a couple of nights ago on the road. His first of the year. 
back against the uh, Joe Coffee. Yep. Actually, yeah, he's hitting 381 against them this season. Has a hit in five of six games. His only home on the season we just talked about against Chill Coffee. Checks takes uh, ball two and zero. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's amazing. These left that left-handed swing is. I always well, I'm left-handed, so I'm biased. <laughs> but I always think it's so it's such a pretty swing. And that one from Meeker for for the home run was wonderful to we watch. It's what they say too. Is for whatever reason, it seems like left-handed hitters tend to to really pull the ball more than righties. I think that's partly because there's more right-handed pitchers than left-handed pitchers, but I, I think that there's something about it, it's something to be said about how they do that. Gonzalez swings through a pitch, and now it's 2-2. Ray caught game one yesterday, and now it's playing third. Him and Gulikowski have both been guys who have caught and played third base this summer for Butler, and pitch high. Also, Meeker's played third. Parks has played third. Mm -hmm. We had McCarthy for a week before he got injured played third base. When you've got four different catchers on your depth chart, only four infielders, you're going to have to ask some of them to go into the field at times. 3-2 inside, ball four. Two out walk. Puts a man on for Ferguson. And we know what he can do to a baseball. Yeah. To put it quite simply, he's been <laughs> sensational this season with you know the power potential with him. 11 home runs tied. For, with Dalton Schumer of Quincy for the league lead in home runs. And as we've talked about before, only needs one more to set a Blue Sox single season record. I believe it's a new walk up song, too, for Yeah, well that was a joke by Bolton. There Bolton come up uh, um, before the game and was like, hey, I want to I wanna change oh, okay. this walk up song real there quick. There we go. So, so is that just for the first at bat? Yeah. So okay. <laughs> last week, Ferguson came up and changed Webb's song to a Canadian song because Webb's Canadian, so they wanted to get him back oh tonight. Oh, boy. There you go. Ooh, big swing there. But he comes up empty. That's that's the beauty of summer ball. These guys didn't even know each other three months ago. Yeah. Or, uh, two months ago, I should say. And and now they're, you know, playing jokes on each other, well, riding the bus all the time together. Did Ferguson get the Gatorade shower yesterday? He did after Yeah, that's, it's a great thing to see at this point in the season. And we talked about this before in early June. Is it's hard to have that team unity then, but by now these guys have spent over a month with each other, so it's enough to form chemistry right there. Two ones low for ball three, and now Ferguson in the driver's seat here with two outs. If you're looking for something to drive, Let's see if he gives them something here. Here's the pitch. It's oh, he won. He won hunting. That was above the. Above the letters, though. A little too high. If he lets that one go, that's easily a ball. But we've seen this with Ferguson. It, it's, if, he, if he sees his pitch, a lot of times they're gonna, the Blue Sox are fine with him swinging away because of what he can do with it. Here's the payoff. That's a swing through for strike three to end the inning. But James Meeker hits a two-run homer to give the Blue Sox a 2 nothing lead after one. Ready to go here in the top of the second. Butler leading 2 0 thanks to a two run jack by James Meeker. First man to be up in the order for Chillicothe here in is Dalton Bollinger.
He had a pretty good day yesterday. And then he pops this one up into right field. Scott coming in, has it. One pitch, one out. And now batting the catcher, number 34, Tanner Picnic. Brings up Tanner Picnic. He had a single yesterday. But for the most part, the Blue, the Blue Sox kept the paints bad at bay. Both games, really, yeah. too. I mean, it was a quiet day for offense yesterday. I mean, trying to think what Chillicott, he scored what a combined three runs in the two games, yeah. correct? So, Blue struggle Sox. for offense. A lot of great pitching, though. Blue Sox scored, I think, seven. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, Blue, or Chillicott, he um, started out like a ball of fire. That ball's smoked. The deep left field. Carew's still going back. He's got room and he's got the ball. At right by the middle right sign on the warning track. Stover just smiles because he thought, I think he thought that was gone. We'll take it. It's an out. With a little bit of wind, that's out of here. But we've got no wind left to right, right to left, anything at all right now. So he gave it a little jump. I don't know if he needed to, but I think he thought it was going to be a little bit higher than it ended up being. But nice catch by Carew at the warning track. Yeah, Cruz played mostly center field for yes. us this summer. He moves over to left field and picks up right where he left off. He's been a solid outfielder all summer. Foul ball here by Newsom. Peyton Newsom made his debut for the Paints yesterday. One for six on the day. He's uh, seen going to just graduated from uh, Indiana Tech, actually. He takes a strike here in the hole. 0-2, oh yeah, Indiana Tech, I believe, is division, I don't know. Actually, I, mean, I shouldn't have even said anything. It Two might be NAIA. It, it might, it might be NAIA. <laughs> that, that's very possible. Two and three, a lot of them, they could go either You're way. Right, it seems. Yeah. You know, you say, oh, is that division two? And then you see, I can tell you oh, this actually a D3, though. You know, it surprises you. <laughs> I can tell you this for sure. It's not division one. Check no. swing. Ah, he went around. That's strike three. Second K, third K for Stobert, and he... Good, works quickly here in the second. And we'll go to the bottom half, Butler two, and chill about it, nothing. Bottom of the order, do up in the second for Butler. Merkonja leads off. He made an excellent catch in center field yesterday. And a nice one in the top of this inning, too. So, yeah, I mean, I apologize. That was Karu. My, my apologies. Yeah, but Merkonja not kind of getting a, a rare start. You know, he's kind of, he started the season and play, getting a lot more playing time, but recently not as much, but done a solid job defensively, even though his bats kind of struggled. Well, he's going to line one to center field. That's going to hold up, though, for Dallas Hall, who makes the catch for the first out. That's a good out, though. No, you know, he, he hit that yeah. ball on the nose. The I'll take that. It looks like that might that might drop in just a little bit in front of center, but you know, he, you're right. He got good wood on that one. Just didn't land where he wanted it to go. And here's Paven Parks. He's actually going to make... Uh, Start on the mound this weekend out in Champion City. Pitching out of the bullpen a lot. There's another one of the two-way guys we have. Merkonja also pitches out of the bullpen. Although we got a lot more pitchers here now, so those guys we haven't do. had as much work. 
Boy, this, recently. This beginning of that season, that bullpen was small. And it was a small one, so you kind of had to have guys tossing their best you know, the starters, or you had to have relievers going a little longer than they wanted to. Well, the ball smoked the right field as well, and it is caught at the wall by Newsom. I thought that one might get out of here too, but that maybe just had a little bit too much air under it. A little too much. It's a little bit lower, you know, different launch angle, then maybe that's out of here, but you know, you look at the the speed of that ball coming off the bat too, like you said, just a little bit too high to quite get out of here. At a ballpark like this, you know, you got it, like we've always said, you gotta hit it hard. When it's 325 to the right field foul pole, you're not getting any cheap shots out there. Merkonja fouls one off himself. Uh, well, I will say, I don't think that Nickemeyer is fooling anybody right now. No. Even the outs have no. been hard. They have. A that's a good point. His approach is, his delivery is really slow, which is, is kind of funny because I'm looking at his, his report on perfect game before I said he, this was out of high school though, he had a quick delivery. He's been really slow and purposeful today. It's amazing what happens when you go to college and they put, they go, well, no, you can't, what? we're, we're going to change you. Exactly. We're going to change everything you do. Yeah, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. And, you know, it's hard to say in this kind of case, but. Check swing. And ball two and one. Just wonder if you get you know too many pitching coaches tinkering with you and they turn you into their own experiment. Maybe that's the case. Maglin fouls another one out of the stadium. Clap yeah, it's it's you're right because he he is very deliberate. Um, yeah. So scouting report said he works quick, so he can get the ball and throw it again. I mean, fastball was listed coming out of high school about 89 miles per hour. I'm wondering if it's even less now though. Well, he's, yeah, it's hard to say from our angle. Ground ball through the whole base hit from Aglione. Two out single. This yesterday, the Blue Sox were all about the two out lightning. Let's we'll see if they can put something together here. That's a good start for Maglione. Yeah, you love it to prolong pitch counts. You love it to extend the inning and get the top of the order going again, like you're doing in this case. So hard not to love getting a run around with two outs. Pitchers hate it, though. They hate it. You know, you think you're about to get a one, two, three easy inning, and then got to pitch to a fourth hitter instead. Here's Carew. He takes a nice, that's probably a slider. Had some break to it. A little bit, yeah. Nothing vertically, though, so I'm, yeah, I'm sticking with that as a slider. And the 0 1. Fastball that time. Gets it up there. And got him where he wants him. Now let's see if they have, he has something to finish him off here. A little roller to shortstop. The throw will not beat Carew. And Lambert, kind of off balance out there, couldn't get a lot on it. And uh, Carew busting it up the line, gets himself a hustle single. Great job getting over there, not giving up on that. Obviously, you didn't get the contact you wanted, but you can still reach. And Carew showing off his speed a bit there. That's why he's been so solid defensively. We've used his speed out there a lot. and. Showing it off a little bit there, too. Reaching on the infield single. Another one else, Gulikowski to come up. It extends the inning. And he already has a single in this game. And I was about to say before in his first that bat, but he singled on the first pitch. But, you know, coming into today, since June 28th, he's hitting 333 with five multi-hit games. Looking for a sixth here. Roll on foul into the Blue Sox dugout. Yeah, he, he's uh, picked up the homers, too, as of late. Uh, a trio of them. Yeah, three of them since the start of the month. And that of his three on the season have come yeah. this month. Yo, one. Gulikowski hits it to deep center. Hall going back, still going back. He's under it. He's got it for the final out. Boy, I tell you, there's been a few the last couple of days for both teams. If they were if, if they were hit at other ballparks, they would have been over the fence. But here, it's just a fly ball out. Exactly. No runs, two hits, no errors, two men left on base. Through two, it's Butler right. two and Chillicothe nothing. It's time for each and every one of us to face a very troubling fact. 
there exists a significant heroin and opioid epidemic in not only Butler County, but elsewhere across the country. I'm Rich Goldinger, the District Attorney of Butler County. This is my backyard and yours too. Together, we can work to eradicate the high-level drug dealers that supply these drugs to those using them. Heroin and opioid abuse does not discriminate. Users come from all economic backgrounds, are male and female, and may be teenagers or middle-aged adults. With your help and in conjunction with the Butler County Drug Task Force and the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, we can target those dealers who bring this poison into our county. Please report any suspicious activity to your local law enforcement agency, the Pennsylvania State Police, or to my office. This is our ballpark. This is our county. This is our backyard. Let's all say, not in my backyard. Please enjoy tonight's Blue Sox game. Ready to go here in the third. Butler leading 2 nothing. They've hit the ball hard through the first two innings. Seems like everything's been in the air. You know, yeah. I, the only ground ball can I think is the one that Carew hit, and you still reached on it, though. Yeah. Nonetheless, he hit it too, so lightly. Ben Aslett at the plate. Whoa, he smokes one to right field, but I think he got that a little bit off the end of the bat, and that allows Scott to settle under and make the catch for the first out. Yeah, you're right. You can kind of hear just the way it came off. It's not that normal crack of the bat that the hitter loves to hear, but it just kind of caught the end of it. You know, good, good job getting a piece of that, but didn't hit it didn't hit as far as he would have liked. Yeah, he... I don't know. It looked off the bat like it was going to be really a lot good. better than yeah. what it was. But that's the way if you don't hit that sweet spot, sometimes that'll de deceive everybody here because I think everybody was kind of like, whoa. Yeah, up? it kind of looked like it was dying away from Scott a little bit too. I was wondering, he looked like he was playing it nonchalantly, but he, he was reading it better than we were. <laughs> Drake Peggs takes the ball. He's ahead 2-0 here on Stobert. Peggs out of Eastern Michigan came, hit, came in hitting 244. Final two hitters in this order, both are hitting 240-ish, so a little bit of struggle as you get to the bottom of this order. Well, he doesn't have much of a strike zone, and he's head 3-0. He's a small guy. I mean, this is something you got to wonder, too, with baseball, is how much the strike zone changes based on your height, because you look at, think about a guy like Aaron Judge in a lot of ways. Called strike here, yeah, and then Jose Altuve. Yeah. You know, I was the opposite. Yeah, exactly. You know, the other day I'm watching, it was a Brewers and Yankees game, and Judge is getting these pitches below his knees called strikes, and I'm saying, how can you expect him to hit that? I know that's in the normal strike zone, but still. Foul ball. So he's back in the at bat here. Yeah, and Altuve just drives. Same thing. He just, he's stuck. used to swinging high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a couple of years ago, didn't he have like that jumping base yeah. hit? Pitches like at his forehead. <laughs> yeah, and he he just drives pitchers nuts. He's such a good hitter. It's pretty crazy. Well, payoff pitch up coming with one out here. It's fouled off. Stober doing a good job getting back into this count too. You th that's one of the things you look for in these pitchers and on the other side the hitters is getting. Out of the opposite end of the count. I mean, it was a 3 0 1 until these last three pitches that have all been strikes. Payoff again. Ground ball, foul ball down the first base line. That would have been a double, probably, at least for Pegs, if it is a foot to the foot to the left. Oh, that was close. That was close. You know, we've got an umpire right there, so I can't question his call on that. We've had other times where we've had plays down the line, you have to wonder, but you know, that one, he had the best view of anyone on that. The uh, first base coach for Chillicothe was pointing fair, but he didn't convince him. <laughs> hey, he's got to do his part. <laughs> That's right. 3-2. Bouncer in. Good bad, good at bad by Pegs here. He fouled, up a, uh, fouled off a couple 3-2 pitches and gets rewarded with a one-out walk. The shortstop, Neil Lambert. Right, turn the page and go to Neil Lambert here. Singled to lead off the game tonight. Best hitter on this team entered hitting 327. 
for Chillicothe. And obviously that's going to go up now with that base hit. Does have three home runs. And he's batting leadoff, so a little bit of power potential. Yeah, he was hitting, I think, 336 coming into yesterday. So He was. He was. So, yeah, a tough day against the Blue Sox, but then... But nonetheless, hard, uh, that's pretty impressive. Hard to keep a good hitter down two days in a row. And Lambert has proven to be a top ten hitter in this league. On a pretty good sample size. Pitch outside 2-0 now. Yeah, you got to love that if you're Lambert. Yesterday go 0 for 6 and then a couple pitches in today and you single to the left to get yourself started, you know. It's just it's a good way to get that snide off and, you know, get hitting again. 2-0 inside, and now Stober having a little bit of trouble finding the strike zone. Kind of wonder if we'll see a pitching visit here soon, just the way the inning has started. Nothing drastic happened. does have an out in it, but like you said, not getting his pitches located where he wants. No, throw over to first. He, um, he did throw it away, but thankfully, Patrick Ferguson uh, was able to jump up way up in the air and and get a piece of that or it would have went out to the bullpen. Yeah, it didn't get enough glove on to catch it, but got enough to kind of you know, delay it a little bit. It didn't bounce too far behind the bag. And like you said, you know, just enough there. Because otherwise, you know, you think about it first, Pegs, he was about ready to take off for second, but that ball didn't bounce as far as he would have liked. Here's the 3-0. Inside ball four, and that is now back-to-back -back walks which will put two men on for Hall. We got the strike out in the first inning. First pitch, ooh, big cut, but maybe they call us a foul tip there to Drew Shields. Must have just nicked the bat on the way by. Just a bit, it looked like. You can kind of hear it softly hit the bat, but you know. You'll hear it louder off of those metal ones these guys usually use. A one. Bit inside. Not a bad pitch, though. Stabert will check second. And now he comes home and bounces one in. Hall started out uh, on a, uh, yeah, on f absolute fire to start the year. I believe he hit the first week. I swing to miss here. I, I want to say he hit the first week. He hit si almost 600. Yeah, first four games his average was at 600. He was actually first six. I apologize. So he was doing fantastic. You look in that span of eight games. I believe he had four. No, six games. He had four multi-hit games. Yeah, he, he was prospect league hitter of the week the first week of the year, but since then has certainly come back down to earth a bit. Yeah, 289 right now. Obviously not bad, but no. if you start as high as he was, then a little tough to be down this low. 2-2, two -two, popped up in the right field. Calvin Scott racing after it into foul territory, and he is not able to get to it. That's a long run for him, and he falls in foul territory for to give Hall another chance. Two and two count here. This is big for big pitch going for Stover too. You know he's got two strikes on bat batter for the first time since you know Pegs had that full count. So looking to try and put uh, put Hall away here. Two two ground ball to third. Stopped by Gonzalez. He'll step on the back for one over to first, and they don't get the double play. Close call, but that would uh, that was a good play by Gonzalez to get the lead runner. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it was a good attempt to get over to first, but it was the right call to just step on third. He may, Maybe he could have gone a little faster there, but I think he was worried about going too fast and air mailing the throw, so I'm fine with that That simple approach he was taking yeah. there. You could tell it wasn't like he was moving with too much urgency, but I think he kind of knew it was going to be tough to get a play at first, regardless. Yeah, it was a good... It was a good job to get to that ball for one, mm -hmm. behind the bag at third, and then to get to the yeah, old ball, hit deep to right field. Roberts has Scott back to the wall, and it is gone. A home run, a three-run jack by Roberts, just over the outstretched arm of Calvin Scott, gives Chillicothe the lead. It's 3-2. to two. Boy, Scott was so close to that one. I know that's what we're going to look back at 
on the broadcast of this game later and say, wow, that was close. But he got just past the leaping grab attempt by Scott. He got that left arm up there, but couldn't quite make the play. And all of a sudden, <laughs> Joel Cothy in the lead. Yeah. The long ball has been the only way the guys have come home so far. Two run jack by Meeker, now a three run bomb by Roberts. Strike call to Cowles. Roberts, that's his fifth of the season, takes that team lead now. Here's a pop up. This should end the inning. Maglione has it for the final out, but the Paints get three on a three run jack by Roberts. We'll go to the Bottom of the third, Chilcothy three, Butler two. Chillicothe leading 3-2 as we play the bottom of the third. Calvin Scott takes a called strike. Scott from Delaware struck out his first time up. And pitch a bit outside, one and one now. So far, the Blue Sox have hit Niggemeyer pretty hard. Yeah, it seems like every ball that's been put in play has you know, been had the potential to either get out or drop for a base hit, but obviously not all of them have. 2-1 upstairs. I mean, we look at just last inning, they had two base hits and three flyouts. Two of them pretty deep, too. So uh, you kind of wonder if the Blue Sox are settling in and kind of figuring out Niggemeyer. Pitch inside, ball four, leadoff walk for Scott. That's Calvin Scott we're used to seeing, taking a lot of pitches and, and getting on base and also has a propensity to hit the ball hard for extra bases. He too. does, he does. You know, Calvin Scott entering tonight at 425 on base percentage, best on the team. So it's like what we said, whether it's walking, whether it's getting base hits, he finds a way to get on. Meeker just fouled down the third baseline. Of course, James hit a two-run bomb his first time up. If I remember correctly, he just changed his walk-up song too today, yeah. didn't he? So yes, he I did. bet you that one's going to stick for at least a couple weeks now. The one Meeker chops it past Niggemeyer. They're going to get at least one on the first double play. A 4-6-3 now Double play number for Great. two quick Great. outs here. I thought maybe that was going to be a little slowly hit for a double play, but uh, they did a good job with the turn. and It was the right positioning for everyone, too. You kind of look at where the infielders were on that one. It just second baseman, you know, Drake Peggs was right next to the bag to make an easy turn to flip over and then easy toss over to first for Lambert. Gonzalez takes the strike. Singled in the first inning. Oh no, he didn't. 
struck out in the first. No, he singled. Didn't he? Yeah. He singled, and then uh, Ferguson struck out. That's right. That's right. Gonzalez takes outside. Foul ball. Off of Picnic's equipment. Two, two fouled off into the net. Nice uh, two strike approach here. Getting a piece of one, staying alive. It's always with that walk in the first, you know, it's just still relevant. When you look back June 28th, yeah, an 0 for 6 day. Ever since then, hitting 321. Looking to improve that average a little more today. Well, he takes his called strike three here to end the inning. And that's the third K yeah, for Niggemeyer. And we'll go to the fourth with Chillicothe ahead, three to two. Bollinger leads off here in the top of the fourth. The Blue Sox trailing Chillicothe three to two. First pitch a bit low. I'm Jaron Steele joined by Joel Norman. So far, it's been the home run ball that's been different in this game. Foul ball. Three run homer by Roberts in the third and a two run shot by Meeker in the first. That provided the scoring to this point. Stobert's delivery swung through by Bollinger. It is one and two. Stobert only giving up two hits in this one, but he looked last inning two walks. His first two of the game are really the struggle for him. Yeah, and those hurt, too, because they both came home on that they home did. run. Yeah, well, the one canceled out on the fielder's choice, but, yeah, you're yeah. right. And, in fact, they basically did. So, yeah, that does hurt, and that's something that you hate to give up multiple in an inning, if any at all. 2-2 two -two gets a strikeout here. It's his fourth K of the evening. No Brings up Picnic. Seen the stuff for Stover tonight, just a matter of when that control is on. Yeah. You know, I think that last inning, obviously, missing a little bit. Didn't have any strikeouts. The two walks you mentioned, the home run. but Fastball inside to Picnic. Flew out hard to left field his first time up. Karu made a nice catch at the wall to rob him. Now it's 2-0. Oh. 
Hubbard is kind of struggling with his command here. Goes to the rosin bag. Two zero, outside again. Just not hitting the zone enough. His last two innings too. It's just his, his first pitch strikes haven't been there for Stober. That's been the real issue. Too many balls. The 3-0 is right there for a strike. That's an easy take for Picnic though. After seeing those first three that weren't really anywhere near the zone. And this, you know, it's nice to get that to prolong the at bat. But the problem is he's just fighting back into too many of these counts like this. That's been an issue. Right, this is inside ball four, third walk of the night for Alex, and it allows Picnic to head down to first base. Now it's Newsom. Well, we got a uh, special um, stat, I guess you'd call it, from Allison last inning. No, I usually get them from her, so big yeah. credit to her for this one. Go ahead. Yeah, she uh, said that New uh, Indiana Tech is in the NAIA. So good on her. Well, ball skied the deep center. And Merkonja is underneath it for the out. He uh, had to circle around that one a little bit, but plenty of time with how high that ball was hit. You know, boy, if you had your eyes closed and you were watching today, you would have thought there would have been five or six home runs yeah. by now based on the crack of the bat today. But <laughs> StatCast would be upset with some of the launch angles we're seeing today. These guys are getting some good contact off of both pitchers, but too many balls being hit straight up into the air yeah. and landing inside the park. That one was way up there. Now Aslett takes outside. Two away here, Picnic at first, and the paint's ahead three to two. The 1-0 from Stobert is a called strike. Here's the pitch. A little bit outside. To the dismay of a couple of fans here. Just a few. I mean, we talked about the walk issues for Stober. You know, down at in college this year, he had 18 and 17 appearances, so, you know, a little over one per appearance. Oh, got him to – he fooled Aslett there with a off-speed pitch way out in front. For strike two, he was mad at himself too after that, just shaking his head. Yeah, and when he knows how the pitcher's been throwing today too, that's frustrating to know you let that that pitch get away from you. Yeah, now the 2-2, two -two comes back with a fastball way outside. Good job by Kulikowski to read that and get the mid on it. Another full count though here for Stobert to drive up that pitch. If I'm not mistaken, it's the third or fourth we've seen in this game too, so. Yeah, he's, he's angling for a short outing here. Runner goes, and swing and a miss, strike three to end the inning. That's now five strikeouts for Stobert here tonight. And one man left here. Bottom of the fourth coming up, Chillicothe three, Butler two.
Ready to go here in the bottom of the fourth. Patrick Ferguson leads it off. Blue Sox down three to two. And here's pitch. Fastball swung through by Ferguson. Fans started to get into it a little bit before he stepped in there. You know, you know what's capable every time Patrick Ferguson steps up to bat. Well, that one's a high foul ball. And chasing it is Aslett, but he'll watch it land just on the other side of the fence. You got to give it a look, though. As far yeah. foul as that was, with all that open area, you got to give it a look. As high as that was, three guys got there for Chilla got the. Yeah, they did. Uh, shortstop Lambert also there, and then Cowles in left field also made a cameo on that play. But they all were there to watch it just elude them. 0 2, high. That's a good pitch, 0 2, because. You know, he's had the propensity to swing at those high fastballs. I was just going to say, that's good patience on Ferguson. He usually goes after those. And he gets some fastball swing through for strike three. And that's back-to-back -back Ks for Ferguson here tonight. And also back-to-back -back Ks for Niggemeyer, who's up to four on the night. Kind of wonder if he's settling into a bit of a groove here. In a lot of ways, the way he's going right now. You look at, got that double play ball last inning after a walk and then two strikeouts since then. Merkonja takes. Yeah, first couple innings, I think we all, both of us were in agree in ag agreement that everything was getting hit hard. This ball's slicing down the right field line. And racing over is Newsome. He's got, makes a catch right by the line. Not sure if that would be a fair foul. It doesn't matter. It's an out. And there's two away here. Yeah, but yeah, Nagelmeyer kind of settling into that groove. You know, that's another fly out. We saw a lot of those, but it wasn't hit as hard as some of the other ones, too. You kind of wonder, and you know, not to you know discredit the Blue Stars, they got a home run off them in the first inning, but you kind of wonder if they missed out on a couple more chances to do some, some damage against Nagelmeyer. Whereas it kind of seems like it's the opposite way on the other side of the hill, you know, for, for Stobert, who's kind of struggled the last couple innings after a great start. Nice foul ball here by Parks. He flew out the right field. He, he just missed a homer his last time up. Yeah, that was a close one. There's been a couple really, really close ones today, but yeah, Parks really wishing he'd gotten a little gust of wind, I think, on his. The 1 swing and a miss. Yeah, he's definitely settled in. Yeah, he's feeling it now. You can kind of just tell. Get executing the pitches he wants, getting the soft contact, getting some swings and misses. Even his um, balls are not missing by much. He's, no. It seems like he's hitting every spot now compared to in the first couple innings where you don't think he was hitting very many of them. Park swings through and strikes out to end the inning. And we'll go to the fifth with Chillicothe leading it three to two. And now, ladies and gentlemen.
Fireworks. Now batting number 26. The second Ready to go here the in the fifth. Greg Peggs leads off. Walked in the third. His only plate appearance so far. Stobert looking to, well, he did a better job last inning. Got a couple of strikeouts. Get the strike here. Felt like some of those at bats were a little longer than he wanted, though. Yeah. 61st pitch of the game right here. Yeah, as we just start the fifth. The 0 1. Hit the left field fairly well. Carew chasing it towards the line, has it for the first out. Now batting number 16. Shortstop, Neil Lambert. Yeah, brings up Neil Lambert. He has been on base twice, singled, walked, scored a run. Feeling the wind a little bit right now. Not seeing too much on the flag and center, but you can kind of feel a little bit more. We're starting to carry that ball a little bit toward the left field foul pole. But Carew made that nice catch. Ground ball, fielded by Part. Oh, never mind. He had it come right up on him. Uh, Ball ate him up, and that probably should be an error on Pavin. That was a pretty routine play. And it will be. Yeah. In and out of the glove, too. He had it set up. It looked like he moved just a step too far to his left. And from our angle, it looked like it was about to go right into that glove, but kind of just struggled with it a bit at the end there and unable to make the play on it. That will drive you a bit nuts as a, as a pitcher. Yeah. You get that routine ground ball, and then it just – Eats him up. Runner takes off. Swing and a miss. Throw down to second. And Lambert is there with a stolen base. Now that that just compounds things. You get yeah. Aaron now a stolen base. And all of a sudden, it should be two outs. And instead, you got one out and a runner on second. Yeah, now you're now you're really frustrated with that. You're thinking you should have had them, like you said. And then good thing, though, on, on Lambert to take off on that first pitch. Because, like you said, Stobert probably too upset to even think about throwing over to first at the time. Oh one, one uh, a little bit low. Not a bad pitch, though. Stewart sets, runner takes off. Throw down, that could have been interference there. The batter never got out of the way. And Lambert overslides the bag and is called out anyway. I get, I, that was, uh, Hall had no intention of getting out of the way. Somehow, Gulikowski threw around him, and the throw was late, but Lambert slides over the base and is called out. He did not like the call, but he did slide over the base. There's your second out. <laughs> I mean, as much happened there, you're right. It, it's crazy that, you know, Stobart finally gets that second out, but it's hard to say if Hall should have gotten out of the way or not. Sometimes you see guys move and they go right to where the catcher's going. You say, what the heck's that? What was he? That's in? true. So I'm almost in favor of the batter just standing still because then you can't say he was in the way. And that's a big out now because there's a base hit out in the left field. That definitely would have scored Lambert. Instead, it's a two-out single. Oh, you're still over there. You're counting your blessings. <laughs> he, uh, Lambert was man. He pounded the base. After he was called out. And it's funny because when he was going into second, you know, Paven Parks was checking on the throw into him. He was trying to see if he'd gone af too far off of the bag, yeah, tagged him twice. Yeah. This time, paid off at third base. So uh, it's something the infielders are taught to do. You know, keep your glove on him. Obviously, don't push him off, but no. make sure you have it there in case he does come off the base. Chopper to second. Maglione's got it. And a 4-3 put out will retire the paints here in the fifth. Is it? it was eventful, but no runs come across. One error, one hit, and one man left stranded. Bottom of the fifth. Coming up, Butler three or Butler trails three to two.
Great. Well, Damian Maglione at the plate here, singled his last time up, and he will ground it right back to Nickemeyer, who throws on to Bollinger for the out. One quickly down here for the Blue Sox, and that brings up Ben Carew. He singled in the second inning. Now number 17, left fielder Ben Carew. Looks like a pretty good pitch, but he takes the ball. Started off. Six straight retired for Nagemeyer here. Blue Sox looking to just get some base runners. Good curve ball here. Yeah, he's uh, Ben's just our second player ever from the state of Wisconsin. Is that so? Yeah. How about that? From Appleton. Swing and a miss here. I mean, a lot of the recruiting for these teams is local guys, but it's kind of nice to be able to sway someone from that far away. Yeah, there goes Kent State. That helps. Yeah. You look at Ferguson and, and um, Parks also from there, so that helps. Yeah, foul ball here. But we got guys from Florida this year. Mm -hmm. um, Delaware, just, just get them from all over the place. And you look at all the bulk of these guys, it's guys who are local, whether they're from Butler, whether you're from Gibsonia nearby. You know, like to stay in town and play ball, but it's nice to get some guys out of state too. Yeah, you can't rely on just local guys. Not at all, not at all. Just like a college team can't re only rely on their in-state products. Mm -hmm. You like to have those, you probably take the most pride in those, but you've also got to get to some other cities too. 2-2, two -two, Carew with a ringing single. Well, no, that ball holds up. I beg your pardon, that uh, Hall was playing very shallow and makes the catch. That bad luck for Ben, that ball was hit hard. I was just gonna say though, that was really far in for where Hall was playing. You look at where he was, he's jogging out past this spot now, but hey, you don't see many shifts at this level, but he was playing really in. None of the other outfielders were there. You look left to right, they were playing their normal spots, but. Yeah, if he misplays that, ben, ben, uh, like it gets down and goes by him, Ben Crew would score. I think so too. Would have uh, been an easy way too. Gulikowski. At the plate, singled and scored in the first inning. Flew out the center field in the second. He's down 0-2 here. Kowalkowski leads the team. The 10 doubles came in second on on-base percentage. We mentioned he's been swinging a hot bat lately. This one misses away. He's uh, one and two, I, I believe. <laughs> Scoreboard's uh, giving us trouble here. <laughs> Takes a ball again, or I'm sorry, Gulikowski takes the ball again. Takes another one. Makes it three and two. Scoreboard says he's out. <laughs> Here's Fitch. It's ball four. And Gulikowski draws a two-out walk. Third time this game now. Blue Sox have sent a batter to first base with two outs, and it's the second time it's been via the walk. So we talked about extending innings, you know, ext and prolonging pitch counts. Got to do it. Look at what Niggermeyer's at right now. He's at 76 pitches in the bottom of the fifth inning. Scott swings through a fastball. Calvin walked in the third inning, also has a strikeout on the docket. Oh one. Whoa, look out. And I'm sure you heard that. That was uh <laughs> right off the top of the roof off the yeah. steel bars here. Yeah. It made its way into the seating area. Don't get too many foul balls right there. Thankfully, nobody got hit by it. Jaron, I got to ask you, you probably know this for sure. Was the netting always this tall here? Uh, behind home plate? First year, it was not. It wasn't? Was it just to the top of the, uh, the yeah. posts? Yep. Really? Yeah. Wow, so there that, was that money that got back here. <laughs> it was when it hit the press box. Did it really? Uh, yeah. It hit the window. It hit the window. Wow. So uh, I guess you got to install that in there. I like the way the netting is here. It allows, it's covering the seating area enough that there's security, but it's not too far that it's not restricting too many catches. You know, it's covering the stuff it needs to, but it leaves some room in there too. Scott, out in front of a 
Looks like a, maybe a changeup or a curveball and uh, fouls it off. Two away here, Gulikowski at first. Two two, this is a, a, maybe a good time to send him. We got, like we said before, got to get something going offensively. The runner in scoring position. Scott with a ground ball past the diving Lambert out into center field, a base hit. It would have been a good time to send him because then it would, he would have been the third, first and third right now. But now, nonetheless, you know, Scott gets on, so the inning continues, but now one into the scoring position. You got two on. Yes, yeah, so, so James Meeker comes up with two men on. A base hit will tie this ball game almost assuredly. To the outfield, at least. At least. At least. An infield single won't do it. Time <laughs> called, and we're going to have a mound visit. So while we have that, we'll do a real quick look and see what's going on around the rest of the league. Eventful for some of the wrong reasons, to, you know, to <laughs> the scoreboard is. Well, yeah, yeah we got <laughs> so Lafayette <laughs> and Kokomo were supposed to play yesterday. Uh -huh. They rained out this for a doubleheader. They, put, they put scheduled a doubleheader today. They rained out again. <laughs> so now they're going to play four doubleheaders coming up. Uh, Quincy leads Danville, or Danville leads Quincy, one nothing in the top of the third. Um, Terre Haute two, Springfield nothing in the bottom of the first. West Virginia one, and Champion City nothing in the top of the second. So yeah, those of you thinking we've had too much rain in Butler, just be glad we haven't had it at the time of games, because you know, Lafayette struggling to get those games in. Yeah, that's and they got a grass <laughs> field too. Yeah, that doesn't help. Curveball in there for a strike to James Meeker. Of course, West Virginia with that one nothing lead early on. They are one game behind the Blue Sox right now for second place. Meeker fouls one off. He's in the hole here. 0 and two. Butler coming in tonight 20 and 17 on a two game winning streak of one six of their last 10. West Virginia at 18 and 17 also has won six of their last 10. Chillicothe going the other way at 19 and 19, but they're three and seven in their last 10. They've been struggling a bit, but West Virginia, and boy, it's next time you know, Blue Sox take on them, that's going to be interesting because where these two teams are in the standings. And like we've said before, you know, West Virginia, they won it all last year. You kind of wonder if they're just getting hot and getting that playoff mentality a little bit early. Meeker fouls another one off. Kokomo's been playing well, too. They have four w wins in a row. Of course, they haven't played yet uh, this week because of the weather. Exactly. But they're 16 and 19 down there in the cellar. 0-2, and that ball is up the middle for a base hit. Gulikowski's around third. Here's the throw from Hall. It is up the line, and it'll allow Gulikowski to come in and score to tie the game at three. RBI single for Meeker. How about this guy today? Having a heck of a day, the home run in the first, now the RBI single in the fifth. It's James Meeker three now, and Chillicothe three. So he's driven it all the run so far for the Blue Sox, but yeah, like you said, heck of a day so far for Meeker. Ray Gonzalez, same situation here. Runner at first, runners at first and second with two away. 3-3 ball game now. Gonzalez takes slow. Breaking ball falls off the table. That's three straight to reach for the Blue Sox with two outs here. Like we talked about, with just prolonging the inning when Gulikowski got that walk and back-to-back -back singles since. 1-0 outside. Ninety pitches now for Nagemeyer. There is warming in the pen for Chillicothe. Oh, oh, it is three and zero on Gonzalez. I believe this is that same guy from yesterday, that uh, side armor Keith. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's him. Out there warming in the bullpen. He throws probably about <laughs> sixty mile an hour, but he gets the job done. <laughs> Maybe I, I might be exaggerating a little <laughs> bit, but he ain't going 60. over. He ain't throwing more than seventy-five. I'm telling you that. Sexy's not going to get you too many scholarships, but. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes to Ohio State. That's no, the amazing no, no, thing. No kidding. Called strike here. He does not throw hard at all. It, it, but it's his delivery. It's weird because well, it, it, if he does come in, it looks like he's ready. 3 1 count to Gonzalez. Here's the pitch. It's inside ball four, and the bases are loaded. 
And now, we'll see if they make the switch. And, or let yeah. Ferguson face him here. He's, he's got Ferguson twice via the strikeout, so maybe you let him go at him here. Yeah, it, it's tough here. Uh, you want to go with that recent success, but then you think, boy, one ball here in this game gets almost put out of reach in a lot of ways. It's a 7-3 game at that point. So now it's kind of just a delay tactic a little bit. And it looks like that. Well, I don't know. He's, he came in from the bullpen for a moment as the catcher went out to talk to this pitcher, but I don't know. Nagelmeyer's fade kind of up in the air. Yep, they're gonna let him. They're gonna let him do it here. This might be his last batter of the night. Two outs in the inning too. So this maybe you're just hoping he gets through it, keeps the game where it is. But like we said, he's gotten Ferguson twice. Like you said, and good pitching around him both times. But all it takes is one mistake to really get kicked out of this game. Well, here we go, bases loaded and Ferguson at the plate. First pitch is a called strike. Curveball. And I think that's what Picnic went out and told me. He said, hey, you got this guy twice. Just bear down here. Ferguson with a line drive to center field. It is going to hang up though for Hall. He makes the catch to end the inning. And Strand, the base is loaded. But the Blue Sox do get one run on two hits, right. no errors, and they do leave three here. Through five, it's 3-3. Three, three. Leading on, number 12, the left fielder, Tyler Cowles. Tyler Cowles will lead off here in the sixth, 3-3 ball game. Blue Sox get one back last inning, and it was James Meeker who's had an excellent day today. Here's the pitch from Stobert. It's hit out into the gap. That will get down. Mercanze will cut it off, and he'll throw to second base. And it throws way too high. And Cowles has himself a leadoff double. Great job by Ferguson to back that up, though, because yeah. it was pretty clear as soon as that ball was released that uh, it was going to be over Meeker's head. But that's what you're supposed to do as the first base and not stay on the bat. Just get back there and see if you can back it up at all. Now batting number 17, the designated hitter, Dalton Bollinger. Dalton Bollinger struck out his last time up. Now, leadoff double for the Paints. See if the Blue Sox have any activity in their bullpen. It looks like they do. I can barely see through all the uh, fencing here. There is a guy warming. I don't know who it is, though. It is throwing. Yeah, it's hard to tell who, but. Strike call here to Bollinger from Toledo. Played with the Paints last summer. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss again. He's fooling with that pitch. Yeah, that, it looks like it's a kind of a – I don't know if it's quite a curveball. I'm not sure if it's quite enough slider, though, because you see that vertical breaking. It's, it's, it's slurve. Slurve, yeah. It's, it's kind of in between, but it's, it's working really well today for Stover. Step off and a look at second. Nobody around, so Cal just casually goes back to the bag.
And now a ground ball to second. This will get the runner to move over. Maglione takes the shore out at first base. That's a good out though for Bollinger, especially with two strikes to uh, get that ball to the yeah, side of the infield. You hit that over to the left side, you know, you may have a play between the bases of second and third, and there might be a problem there, but you're right, he hit it to the right side, and it paid off for and then advancing the runner over. Only one out, too, so a sacrifice fly by Picnic could give Chillicothe the lead once again. Picnic will hit it to center field. Merkonja coming in, makes the catch. The runner will tag. Here's the throw. It is not in time. Cowles comes in to score, and it's now 4-3. to three. Good throw from Arconja, though. It just uh, was a little bit high, and Golikowski wasn't going to be able to make a tag. I mean, Golikowski was, the way it bounced at the end, he has to stay on the base there because if he comes forward, he's he's going to have to lean back too far. It's going to be a tough play. So I, I think Golikowski played that right. It just the throw was just that off from being right there to, to gun him down. Paints have made the most of their opportunities tonight. Four runs on four hits. And they lead 4-3. Here's Newsom, 0 for 2 at this point. So we're looking to get one more out here, get out of here. And that'll probably be it for him tonight. Well, instead, he's going to give up a line drive that'll sink into shallow right center for a two-out single. That, hey, that's a broken bat single. You can really hear the bat on that one. Yeah, we don't have the crowd mic going today, but I'm sure you still heard that one through hours here because uh, the crack and just the way they've been hitting this inning, no too. Baby. Even on that sacrifice no fly, no it's just baby. hard hit and they're low. These are their line drives being hit for the most part. And you said Stover kind of just needs to get through this here and then hand it over to the bullpen. Ben Aslett to the plate. Stover steps off. Here's the pitch. Foul ball into the net. Surprise ass. Let's swung at that first one. Like we've said, the whole issue today for Stobert has been getting those first pitch strikes. Mostly been balls on his first offerings. But, you know, Aslett hoping to just get a piece of something on that. Here's the 0 1. It's high. He's got to be uh, getting closer to, what, 80 pitches? Just about here, you know, getting... 76, right? Yeah. So, it, it, four away here. 1-1. One, one. Just a little bit outside. Stover didn't, didn't like that call. He thought that was a strike. Just got to battle your way through this here, like we said. You know, obviously giving up the lead now, but... Just kind of need to keep things right where they are. Go over to first. Newsom back safely. Really comes down to tonight a couple of walks, but there was one one mistake pitch that he made to Roberts. Yeah. And it's the first pitch after that fielder's choice, and you're kind of thinking maybe he's going to get out of this jam. So, yeah, that that's – and then I guess the double this inning, but – until this inning, every run had been scored with two outs, ironically. Pitch high, three and one. And you have a guy warming in the pen. Looks like he's ready. But a watch and see what happens against Aslett. And here's a three one. That's way high ball for Stobert. Having some issues here. And I would not be surprised yeah, if we don't see at least a mound visit here. Yep, here he comes. Josh Forbes, our pitching coach. Four walks on the day now for Stober. We talked about that. Was, it's been an issue for him. And like I said, starts with strike one, getting that in there early in the count. But you know, these innings where he's giving up the walks, I said it was three of four. They've all come. Three of those four have come in innings where he's given up a run. Two. So three, of course. Three runs came across the score in that third inning when he walked two and then walks one this inning and a run scores. Then no coincidence, too. It just shows the patience pays off. Well, they're going to stick with him here to face Drake Peggs. 
4-3 Chillicothe with two outs in the top of the sixth inning. Pitch count at 80 pitches exactly for Stobert. So kind of nearing that limit here as you get further and further in the game, but you kind of wonder how many he'll go. Check of second. Here's the pitch. Fouled off by Peggs. Peggs 0 for 1. Walked in the third inning and flew out to left field in the fifth. A one, chopper right back to Stobert. He'll throw over to first, and that will end the inning. So Alex will go six here tonight. No, or one run on two hits, no errors, and uh, two men left stranded. Bottom of the six coming up. It's Chillicothe four, Butler three. Everyone's favorite part of the week is Thursday because that means it's Thirsty Thursday. Come out to Kelly Automotive Park each Thursday to support your favorite hometown team, the Butler Blue Sox, and enjoy our special concession prices, including $1 draft beers and 50 cent pops. Tickets start at just $7 and can be purchased online at butlerbluesox.net and or by phone at 724-256-9994. Let's go Blue Sox. New pitcher for the Chillicothe Paints, Tyler Keith, who pitched an inning yesterday, will take over for Jacob Niggemeyer. Foul ball by Merkonja. Niggemeyer goes six or five innings, six hits, three runs, four walks, and five strikeouts. And as of now, he's in line for a win. He is. Thanks to his offense, the bomb happy. Eh? Strike call here. Now Tyler Keith comes out of the pen. He's a side armor, and he he is also a guy who does not throw hard at all. Pitch outside, and he we noticed yesterday whenever uh, Kellen was on, he picked up on it right away. He will change his delivery. Uh, pitch inside, three and two. He he goes. Sometimes he'll go quick pitch. Other times he'll like pause, like uh, almost like a Johnny Cueto <laughs> type deal. Up the shimmy. Yeah. <laughs> and then other times he just regular, just like that. He's regular. A little weak grounder. This could be a tough play. Merkonja busting it down the line. Throw to first from Lambert in time for the out. Now batting number 13. But after seeing a guy who throws like, probably in the mid 80s, you, you, you see this guy. It probably a takes a little bit to get used to. That's a heck of a difference. Like you said, that change in velocity is going to mess with the guys. And it doesn't matter, you know, what it how low it is, the fact is that it's that difference can be tough for people to be getting used to. Those fastballs that came in near 90 before might be you know, 82. Haven Parks fouls one out of play on the left field side of the park. You know, one, it's a called strike. 
mentioned though, Keith threw that scoreless outing yesterday against the Blue Sox. He's got no record in three appearances, a 180 ERA, five innings pitched overall. Chopper up the middle. Lambert can't quite get to it. He wouldn't have had to play anyways. That's a single for Paven Parks. And Blue Sox get a base runner here for Maglione. Blue Sox have their work cut out for them. They've shown they've been able to get on base in this one, but you know, Chillicothe's had an answer for Butler every time. Seven hits now for the Blue Sox. Five for the Paints, one error for Butler, none for Chillicothe. Roll it, that's a foul ball. I think it might actually hit Maglione's foot. If it didn't, it just missed it going up the line. And he ran anyway because there wasn't an immediate ruling. Played umpire must not have seen that off the Drew Shields. May not have seen that hit off of Maglione's foot. So because he didn't really run right away. Yeah, he didn't. But then he realized there hadn't been a call, so made the right call to just take off for first. No, a little flare in the left field coming in and having it fall in front of him is the left fielder out there, Cowles. And Parks just barely gets in the second. Had to hold up to make sure that ball wasn't going to be caught. But now two men on with one out. Back-to-back -back singles. Parks was about 80% of the way there to second, but that just shows how lightly hit and close that was out in left field to Cowles that he had an immediate play. But nonetheless, first and second for Butler. Well, ben Carew at the plate. He watches one go to the backstop. Both runners are going to move up. And a wild pitch from Keith. Sets the table for Carew. Sure does, because now there's no double play ball to end the inning, uh, barring some unusual circumstances. <laughs> you know, right. if we get a liner and you touch the bag, but yeah, great opportunity here for the Blue Sox. Like we said, only one out in the inning. So uh, the very first day when everybody got here, we took pictures of all the players put on point streak, mm -hmm. and uh, they spend crew swings through here, uh, and now at a one-one count. We took the first picture, uh, Peru. And Pat took all the pictures. I just crossed all the names off the list mm -hmm. as we got them, and he walked away. And five minutes later, we looked at each other and said, "Well, ball hit the left field. I'll finish that story here in a minute. That ball's still going, still going, still going. It's off the wall." Over the head of Cowles, one run in, now racing home, and scoring is Maglione. The Blue Sox have a 5-4 lead on a double by Ben Carew. Two-run double by number 17, Ben. Big hit by Carew. Runners had to watch to make sure that one was, you know, not going to be caught. It was going to stay in the park. It hit the base of the wall right by that Armstrong sign out there at Nearing left center, but great base running by Maglione to get all the way around there. That's not easy, having to hold up in between second and third and then, you know, bust your butt all the way around, sliding just ahead of that throw. What a close play. Uh, good for Ben, too. That's a you Now Gulikowski takes a strike. Anyway, it's a your story. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. So <laughs> I just happened to look here on the point streak, and now this is what reminded me of it. So we thought, we said the first guy, he didn't have his hat on. Uh -huh. He took a picture. So there, you now ball line to deep center. That ball is going to hit the wall out there. Coming around the score is Carew. Golikowski's going to replace him at second with a standoff RBI double. It's now six to four, and the Blue Sox have broken it open. And I got to figure that seeing Keith two days in a row, they've kind of really helps out. We talked about the difference in the pitch speed, how that's going to affect batters. But in a case like this, it's been a long enough inning. There's been a lot of pitchers thrown. They're being patient with him. You're getting a really good look at it now. And that, I think Blue Sox are just kind of teeing off now as we're seeing a lot of extra base hits. And like you said, seeing him yesterday does help. Back-to-back you know, -back days, I think something can be said for that. We talked about this before with starting pitchers where you know, we say Butler's seen him twice this season. What does that mean since it hasn't been since mid-June? But a case like this with relievers, it's a little bit easier to catch on, even though the sample size might be a little bit smaller. 
So anyway, but, but yeah. Well, I was going to say, wait to tell the story. Yeah. Tell it on Tony yeah. FM, because then, <laughs> then Butler's going to get some more runs. But so hold up here. Yeah. <laughs> well, so we're like, oh, Ben didn't have his hat on. Pat said, that's okay, I'll Photoshop one on him. Well, he must have forgot, because no <laughs> he's the only guy on our point streak site doesn't have a hat on. There's some kid <laughs> on there. Yeah, everyone else has their hat. Some people still haven't got their photos up. But here's the pitch to Calvin Scott. He's in there for a strike. Scott singled his last time up. He's been on base twice tonight. 6-4 Butler now. And this ball's a pop-up on the infield. Second baseman Peggs has it for the second out. Now let's see what James Meeker can do. Boy, he's been solid all day. Right? He got, it was, for a while it was uh, James Meeker three, Chillicott three. Until you know, he's let this inning, really. You look at Chillicott, they got another one in the top half, and then uh, Butler's gotten some runs uh, from, you know, brought in by Carew and Golikowski now, but I'm sure Meeker would like to add to this. Pitch misses high. Keith from Carmel, Indiana, where they, uh, Crooked Stick is. They host uh, one of the, bar uh, the PGA uh, FedEx Cup playoff events. Okay. Almost every year. B I think it's called the BMW Classic. Pitch bounces off the mid. Picnic recovers, though. And so, yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, though. Your ability to recall these guys' colleges is superb, Jaron. <laughs> I got to <laughs> applaud you on that. So especially the opposing teams, too. That's pretty tough. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a lot of work. Oh, ball hit it to deep right field. Is it going to be a two overnight? Yes, it is. A two overnight for Meeker. And it's eight to four. Oh, my. What a ball game for James Meeker. Make that five RBIs on the day for James Meeker. He came into play today with nine on the season. And the Butler Blue Sox now lead eight to four. Now batting number seven, third baseman. If you're coming to the park, you know, for the first time ever for a Butler game, you're starting to think, oh, this Meeker guy, boy, he can rake. No, first two home runs in two years with the Blue Sox. Yeah, so. that's amazing. That's going to be it for Keith. Well, that's going to balloon the ERA for sure. And, this and how about how about the Butler Blue Sox? They're showing their, they are, this has been a struggle through you know five innings. Sturbert was laboring out there, but he did his best to keep the damage to a, a reasonable amount to give his team a chance to win. And then they bring in a relief pitcher, and the Blue Sox just tee off on him. Sometimes that's all you need. We thought this might be a problem because of the change in velocities, but the Blue Sox got in there and immediately adjusted, doing a fantastic job filling in there. But, wow, what a big inning for Butler. You, know, you look at where they are. They're about to bat around here. You need two more it hits to extend, two batters to at least reach to extend the inning, but you know, fantastic look so far for the Blue Sox. I mean, all these runs this inning, you've got three, the last three hits have all been extra base hits, too. You know, you look at the double from Carew, then a double by Gulikowski, and out later, and then Meeker goes deep. Well, it looks like Chris Robinson is going to come in to replace Tyler Keith, who will go two-thirds of an inning and allow five runs. <laughs> all, earned. all of them earned. Five uh, hits. Five hits. He didn't walk anybody. You win some, you lose some. He also <laughs> didn't strike anybody out. Wow. I get, they, uh, that's Pat always says. Um, he says, Pat Reddick, uh, he says, you'd rather give up hits than walks, but there is a limit. That's <laughs> a great point. That's a great point. You know, the walks are on you. A lot of base hits. You know, a lot of people like using the fielding independent pitching stat, whereas, you know, what is a single if your fielders maybe position differently. But, you know, walks aren't going to help your fit. You know, home runs aren't going to no, happen. Neither yeah, <laughs> are the ones that land in the parking lot. Uh, no, no, those aren't going to help either, though. So you kind of look at going uh, some dumb luck, but also Blue Sox kind of just teeing off this inning. So Ray Gonzalez will bat. He's walked twice tonight. Robinson on the summer. He pitched yesterday, too. Um, Robinson is making his 16th appearance. 
Gets a chopper to short. Lambert's throw will retire Gonzalez to end the inning, but it was a fantastic inning for the Blue Sox. Five runs come across on five hits, no errors, and no one is left on base. We'll go to the seventh with the Blue Sox now leading eight to four. On July 29th, for our game against the West Virginia Miners, the Woodman's Life Chapter and the Butler Blue Sox will be recognizing the Butler County first responders for everything they do to keep our community safe. We appreciate every dedicated and hardworking individual that serves our community. Our firefighters, police officers, and paramedics work in a stressful and dangerous environment on a daily basis. So, we'd like to give them the opportunity to have a relaxing day at the ballpark where they can enjoy a Blue Sox game capped off by some dazzling fireworks. Go Butler Blue Sox! Neil Lambert leads off here against Alex Stobert in the top half of the seventh inning. Butler ahead now, eight to four, thanks to a five-run inning highlighted by a two-run homer by James Meeker, his second of the day. You want offense? We've got that and some today, the way this one's been going, especially that big inning for the Blue Sox. Now you just got to hang on to it. Stobert looking to... Go another inning here. First pitch low to Lambert. And now the 1 0. Chopper to first. Ferguson has it go by him. Fielded by Maglione. Race to the bag. And it looks like the runner beats Stober. And that'll be a single for Lambert. Uh, tie goes to the runner. That was pretty close to a tie, but uh, even I think it was the right call. Yeah, though. it was. That was correct call. Yeah, I think that was. It was a close one, but I, I still think that was the the right call in that scenario. As you kind of looked at how that was going, but close play. A good job to, by Stover to get over there. He just wasn't quite in time. Here's the pitch to. Hall, that's a pop-up that will land in foul territory. Oh, one bounced into the paint off the paint's dugout. Same two teams tomorrow, 6.35 game time. Just got a good look at the replay. It looked like it was the right call there. It was really close. It looked like at the last second, Lambert got that, that left foot in there just in time. Here's the 0-2. That's a little bit high. Pause from Stobert. And the pitch, it's a bouncer, good block by Golikowski. But um, overall, it's been a fun night at the ballpark. A lot of action. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say we'd have a lot of fireworks, but we're saving those for tomorrow night. That's right. The big game. Hard hit grounder, but foul down the third baseline over to the Paints bullpen. Uh, tomorrow, but a big one, the number 500 for the Butler Blue Sox. Yes. Should be a big crowd, giving out the, the baby ox bobbleheads. 
And we got the fireworks afterwards. Uh, what's a Thirsty Thursday, too? Yeah, there's a Busting whole out all the promotions for tomorrow night. A whole lot of stuff going on tomorrow. 2-2 <laughs> two delivery from Stobert is low again. Yeah, full count here, and you can't mess around here too long. If he if he can't get uh, Hall here, you got to look to the bullpen. That's what we were talking about before. I and mean, He's just touching 90 pitches now is Stobert. 3-2 to left field and fairly deep. Carew going back, going back, still going back. Can't get it. It's off the wall. And now they'll have runners on second and third with nobody out. This is what I was talking about when I was so surprised to see Stober towing the rubber. It's just the pitch count may be fine, but it's it's clear he's not you know getting the pitches where he wants them right now. Yeah, because now, you know, they're set up well here to get right back into this ball game. Four-run lead doesn't feel so big when you've got second and third with no outs. And Josh Forbes is coming out. He's going to motion to the bullpen. That's going to be it for Alex Stober. He'll go six-plus tonight. He's allowed four to this point on seven hits. He walked four. And struck out five. And we'll see who's coming in to replace him. Stover had a great start to today's game, but just you know, as it got deeper and deeper, really ran into some trouble. Looks like it's going to be Jamie Switalski coming in. Switalski from the University of Maryland at Baltimore County. Division one school down there in the American East Conference. But he's a native of Gibsonia, went to Pine Richland. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking about it. UMBD. They just got, um, they were just in the uh, NCAA tournament, actually, this past year. Yeah. They uh, played in the same bracket. I was at the games I was at. I was covering West Virginia. They lost to um, host Wake Forest in the first round. Well, it was a double elimination loss to Maryland the next day. But it was pretty. You could tell it was pretty exciting for them just to be there. It, it's big for little schools like that. You know, it's not like everyone makes it to the NCAA tournament. It's 64 teams getting in there. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a few guys. Good stories every year from them. Small conferences around. And it's funny because um, you got. The MAC, who is uh, considered a small conference, but they've had some. We've got some players from there, and they've had some teams make some good runs in the. Uh, they have. Uh, the it, NCAA tournament. It just it can surprise you some years. You know, some of these guys, yeah, what they're able to just do team. out there, Jay maybe just Roberts. you get a team that's just hot one year. You get a good group, and they make their way into the tournament. And that really, for a lot of those schools, that's what their goal is. All right. Well, Swatowski's ready to go, but Pavin Park's got to tie his shoe first. Over, run around a tree. There we go. He's got it. Swatalski on the season. Five appearances, 540 ERA over six and two-thirds innings pitched. Struck out four, walked two, giving up seven hits. Does have two saves for the Blue Sox. So Swatalski versus Roberts here. A check of the runner at second, even though he can't go anywhere. Here's the pitch. Roberts pops it up. That'll go out of play. Flirt with the lights. Oh, he did hit it. Oh, my goodness. He hit the light post. That crashes for the lights. <laughs> Not for your car. <laughs> I looked down. I didn't see that one, but wow. Huh. That's a, uh, yeah, I've been doing this for. Going for the Roy Hobbs moment there. Yeah, I've been doing this since 2010. That's the first guy that's hit the lights here. Wow. Swing and a miss from Roberts. He's down now 0-2 with nobody out. You definitely don't want to strike out in this situation. No, no. But just put the ball in play here, and you're hoping to get to the opposite side. We're getting between that hole between short and third. There's a big gap right now. Gonzalez playing towards the bag. Pitch outside. Not a bad pitch, 0-2. Yeah, he could waste one there, so you want to try and get him chasing. And like we said, if you're going to get him, you want to hope he's going to put it to the opposite side. That will be weakly hit. Switalski's delivery is hit the left field. Carew back, has it for the out. And that will allow a run to come in. The other runner's going to tag up, and he will be there safely. It's heads up, heads up base running by Hall. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, by, um, yeah, by Hall to get the third. And no, Lambert comes in to score. It's now eight to five. 
Yeah, Hall kind of caught Carew just nonchalantly tossing the ball in and took off for third. You know, Carew knew he didn't have a play at the plate, but then wasn't, it looked like he wasn't thinking about third base. And then next thing you know, you got a runner in there. Pitch to Cowles is a strike. So Hall at third. Here's the pitch, chopped foul, and now he's right where we were a minute ago, 0-2, with a situation where you do not want to go down swinging. No, put the ball in play here. Sacrifice flies still in play, only one out. So you know, on the flip side, if you're Switalski, you're trying to hope to get your partner off the hook here, that runner at third, get a couple more outs quickly. Curveball, woof. Movement looked good. Oof. I'll say that. It looks really good there. Yes. Well, he doesn't get the call. One, two count. And here is the pitch. It's a swing and a miss. Strike three. Cowles goes down. Big strikeout from Swatolski. Inevitable delay there. He's going to go down. Just going took an extra pitch to do it, but nonetheless, able to get him. But Switalski with good movement on these pitches today. We're seeing we saw the curveball pitch ago, the fastball on that one, upper in the zone. I like what I'm seeing with his stuff. It's up to Dalton Bollinger. He's 0 for 3. And he ooh, got him off of speed there. On that change up there. Wow. Yeah, the old straight change. I wanted a fastball after seeing. Cow's going down, swinging on one. The 0 1 from Bollinger is hit to right field. Calvin Scott is going to be there, and he's got it for the final out. Good job by Switalski out of the bullpen to limit the damage. Only one run comes across on two hits, no errors, and one man left stranded at third. But we'll go stretch time here. Bottom of the seventh coming up. Butler eight, so Chilla Coffee five. Bottom of the seventh here in Butler. Blue Sox ahead, eight to five. Patrick Ferguson leads off against Chris Robinson. I think this is the guy who hit the 11th home run of the season off of yesterday. I'm pretty I sure. I think you're correct. That tied the Blue Sox single season record. Take the ball here. Let's go back to yesterday's box score. That just hit me right when we come back. Called strike one and one. And first, I'm looking for number 12, though. Like we said, that would set a Blue Sox record. Be fantastic if he could do it. That's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. He's had a tough day so far. You remember that last time he came and flew out to center with the bases loaded. Yeah. Looking to avenge that, I bet. Oh, there it is. I bought a deep right field, a new record for the Blue Sox, the 12th home run of the season for Patrick Ferguson. And now he stands alone atop the record books for the Blue Sox. He's eight away now from the Prospect League record. Wow. 
No doubt or off the bat, right? At, just barely got those words out of my mouth. Great moment for him. Looks like a lot of people recognize that too. Yeah, he got a good standing applause here. Well deserved. Number 12 for Ferguson. Back to back days and think it's gonna be off the, was it off the same pitcher? I'm actually uh, checking that out right now. We got time called. It's 9-5 ball game now in favor of the Blue Sox. Let's see here. He hit that yesterday in the fifth inning. Correct. So right, first it was actually off of uh, McAndrew. Okay. So it wasn't the same guy. Close though. Okay. The work though that, that Ferguson has done though in his time here, very impressive with the, the power off his bat that we've seen. It's it's exciting to watch. We talk about it all the time. It's just every time he steps up, you never know what's gonna happen. So fun to just watch it. You know, it's, it's part of the excitement. A guy who's gonna strike out a lot, but boy, you know, he might hit that one ball out a game. It's gonna you know, get you to your feet. It's been fun to watch. And now Robinson's day is done. And a new pitcher coming in, number six. We'll get a name on that real quick. That is Simeon Combs, a junior from Marshall University from Crown City, Ohio. 5'7", 170, looks every bit of it out there. And I believe this, Hello, guy, yeah. Yeah, this is his debut for the Paints. He was just signed on Monday. Okay. New from the uh, note on Ferguson, though, you know, this is the fifth time this season that he's homer now on back-to-back -back days. He actually had a span, as I'm kind of looking back at now, where he had a, he had a span where he had three straight games where he homered in them. So you know, Ferguson a lot of times been hot and cold, we talked about. He had a long stretch without hitting any before hitting a couple in a row against Chillicothe to start this month. But... You know, fantastic season so far, and it's not over yet. You said eight away from the overall record, you believe? Yeah, the record for the league is 20. Okay. That was set by Giancarlo Brunoni back in 2013, I think it was. Okay. Yeah, so, so um, it was a Chillicothe paint who has a, the league record. Not too far away then. I think it's, it's very doable at the rate he's been hitting at. Yeah, so it's funny. I... 2012, actually. 2012. Okay, I know he played here. Off. He played here two years, so he played for the Paints in two summers. Good job, Allison. Yeah, good um, that to her. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. A year uh, off. Yeah, uh, yeah. He did play 2012 and 2013 for them. So. Anyway, um, I, I when I was walking off the field after interviewing him last night uh, for player of the game, I said, you know. League record's 20, and he's like, oh, I'm just, I'm not going to get that. Uh, I don't know. Merkonja nearly hit by a pitch. So it comes. Making his first start, or relief appearance, I beg your pardon, for the paint. And here's the 1-0. Chop to Harold. Couldn't quite commit to bear handing that one. Tried. Yeah, he thought about it. Yeah, I was thinking about it too. You're gonna have a heck of a debate between who to have your uh, post-game interview with. I think you know, normally Meeker would obviously get it, but with Ferguson setting a record for the Blue Sox, I think that's worth some mention. Yeah, it's weird. Maybe do a dual interview yeah, today. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe. I'm well, thinking maybe it would be worth it for a game like this. Meeker deserves one for sure. For sure. Two one, high. Another night where the Blue Sox hit a bunch of home runs. Three yeah. on the day, yeah. yeah. Two from Meeker and then uh, Ferguson's right there. 3-1. Merconja takes outside ball four. Now batting number 13, the shortstop, Pavin Parks. Haven Parks at the plate now. Combs ready to go. Pitch misses a little bit high. Line for Robinson, a real brief one inning. Just a third of an inning allowed one run on that one hit, the first and home run. No walks or strikeouts for him. 
Here's the 1 0. It's also outside. Combs having a little bit of trouble finding the strike zone. Chillicothe, the uh, bullpen, I don't want to be too hard on them, but they have not got uh, the job done here in no, the last, last couple of days. Yeah, I had, they had a tough time yesterday. You know, really just, we saw Ferguson getting the one home run off a reliever yesterday and some other struggles, just not really keeping the games too close. It's not like yesterday's games were high scoring. There were two run deficits in both of them, so just not able to get it done, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it, signs it, of struggling it, teams though. It, yeah, well, yeah, the three and seven in the last ten coming in tonight, and uh, they didn't get the job done tonight too. A five spot, and then another. Right whenever you get one back, and you think, hey, we're right in this thing, then yeah, they absolutely. just stretch it right back out. You know, Nigemeyer went five innings, allowed three runs. You know, that, it is giving your team a pretty good chance to win. His pitch count obviously not where he would have liked, but you know, when Keith comes in, and gives up that five spot, that, that didn't help. Hi. Foul ball over top of the stadium. Parks today singled and scored in the sixth. Has a strikeout and a flyout as well. 3-1 count here. And ball four. Another walk here. They do have, we got so many walks, we got walk socks. I was going to say, <laughs> you, know, you get so many, you have to keep adding them. But yeah, Blue Sox are willing to be patient with the way this game has gone. I mean, it's a four-run lead. You might as well wait for your pitch at this point. No pressure at all. Yeah. So why not draw the walks? So here's Maglione. He singled and scored. He's two for three today, having a, having a good day with the bat. Six walks on the day drawn by Blue Sox batters. Foul ball here by Maglione on a bunt attempt. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Maglione having a nice day, though. Kind of getting overshadowed. We've got a few other huge performances that have kind of stuck out, but not to be forgotten. Not the big RBI hits, but kind of setting the table in a lot of ways. You think about what he's been able to do. A one, foul ball, into the paint, and back out of the paint, stuck out. Still nobody out here. Uh, two men on, 9-5 score. And Magloon at the plate. Check. And a step off after a time is called. Here's the pitch. It's outside, one and two. Think about all this offense the Blue Sox have gotten in these last three innings, you know, seven runs combined. Obviously, the big five spot, two innings, I mean, last inning really stands out, but. This is the 19th batter they've sent to the plate in this time. It just shows how much they're working through this order. One, two, hit him. And now the bases are loaded. Now back, number 17, left fielder, Ben Carew. Right on the back on that pitch. That, oh, that's yeah. a stinger. That's second Dan Rowe he's got hit. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, uh, the waves continue for the paints bullpen. Yeah, it's, it's been a struggle for them to just to get these simple outs. It really is seem like, and you know, uh, you get a visit here, no throwing right now. They're about to send someone out to maybe do some catching for someone to throw because you hate to have to keep using arms, especially in a game that's going this way, but when you're struggling to get outs, you have to. And at the same time, the way this game has gone, a four-run lead doesn't guarantee anything. Yeah, if you're Brian Bigland, manager for Chilcott, you got to be thinking, this throw strikes, man. We're yeah. down by, you know, we're, we're down and... and Still no outs. Uh, please, somebody get it out. <laughs> Still no out. That, like, that's the scariest thing now. It looks like you, at least the left-hander up out there. Yep. For Chillicothe. You wonder if you'll see a righty as well at some point, but... 
I mean, this is, a, this is a righty heavy lineup for the Blue Sox, too, but at this point, you're just trying to get bodies out there, you know? Only lefty in their bullpen is Casey McConaughey. The only left hand pitcher they have. So it's got to be him, right? Crew swings through a pitch here. I'd save him for Meeker, the way he's been hitting today. Yeah, I mean, Gulikowski's a lefty on that's deck. That's true, that's true. Forgot about that. Then you want to pitch to Scott, the right-hander. Unless it's one of their position players warming up. Again, I think it's 21. So that would be McConaughey. 1-1 one, one count to Ben Carew. Two RBI double his last time up. He's going to pop this one out of play. Merconjit third. Parks at second. Maglione at first. Nobody out. And an opportunity to really turn the lights out on this thing. Look at what the infield's playing here. Second and short at the edge of the grass. They, they maybe double play depth. First and third at the bags. Carew takes outside. And the 2-2, Carew pops it up on the infield. That should be infield fly roll. That's an automatic out. But Aslett will make the catch anyway. Now batting number 22, the catcher Brady Bolkowski. No oh, one away, here's Gulikowski. A chance with the bases juiced. He's been on base three times and has scored three runs. He also drove in a run. And he smokes it to right field. The only question is, is it going to stay fair or foul? It's foul. Boy, that was close. Yeah. Though. It's the higher up they get, the tougher it is yeah. to tell. That's the toughest thing. And it's not like we have seats out there to, to tell us, you know, whether that was fair or not. That's a judgment call, but I think that one was just foul. Yeah, it was on the other side of the pool. Hard to see on, you know, probably – the broadcast, but boy, that was close. Had the height for sure, no doubt about that. 0-1, Gulikowski takes a called strike. Leading the way for the Blue Sox says Gulikowski three, three runs scored. Driven one on his own. 0-2, low. Yeah. He's, he's had a great day. We can say that about a lot of these Blue Sox hitters. I was going to say, who's had a bad day? You know, even the people that haven't really gotten a base hit have still found a way to reach. Everyone has at least reached. Gulkowski takes the pitch low. Combs running into cover just in case that ball got by, but Picnic keeps it in front of him. Yeah, only players without a base hit today, Ray Gonzalez and Stefan Marconja, but both have a walk. Gonzalez actually has two. And the 2-2. Hard hit ball, foul, down the right field line. That ball would have been, that would have cleared the bases. That would have, the way that was rolling, that would have gone into the Blue Sox bullpen. It would have been a tough throw out of that corner. But boy, oh boy, Golikowski having two really close opportunities to clear the bases. See if he can straighten it out this time. For a freshman, he is quite a hitter. Oh, pitch almost hit him. Ball goes to the backstop. Mercon just stays put, and now it's a full count. Only well, Kelsey had a little discussion <laughs> on that one. He said a couple words to Combs. Obviously, no intent to hit him with he the base's not. juice. <laughs> I mean, you wonder, though, after two hard hit foul balls. Yeah. Tried to probably just bring him inside on him. And, uh, just got get too, too low. Far. Way too low and way too, way too inside. Payoff. Lukowski takes high ball four, and that will bring home a run. As coming in the score will be Merkonja, an RBI walk for the Blue Sox. Makes it now 10 to 5. Get an RBI for that. Your patience pays off in that case for Lukowski. So 
yeah, so for uh, Combs, it's been walk, walk, hit by pitch, pop fly in the infield, walk. Oh, boy. Rock uh, debut. Uh, the way you draw it up. And that's going to be it for him. Only got one out. Yeah. But, yeah, you're right. He's done. Blue Sox are batting around, though. Putting the to work, you know, not just satisfied with the home run by Ferguson this inning, but also the patience pays off. Like you said, three walks this inning, a hit by pitch when Maglione was hit. And, wow, fantastic job so far. Hey, he didn't give up a hit, though. Hey, what were we talking about before? Who was that? You know, same two, did, hadn't walked anyone. Yeah. All he did was give up hits. That was, um, I'm trying to think now. Uh, Tyler Keith, when he yeah. tossed that, um, when he was in the sixth inning, he gave up five hits, didn't walk anyone. <laughs> well, this one, didn't give up any hits. Three walks and a hit by pitch. Pick your battles. Well, line's, line's not closed at all yet. Though. No, that's that's no. a thing to consider. He's allowed one run already, and he's responsible for everybody on base. So he could uh, see a ballooning ERA here. He got wow. Uh, number Didn't you have a hit? <laughs> yeah, number 21, left-hander Casey McConaughey, is going to take over. Fifth pitcher of the day for the Paints. The yeah, McConaughey Case goes to Case Western Reserve. He was a freshman there this year from Amherst, Ohio. And uh, I'm guessing they're just hoping that he can get some outs for them here. Yeah, you have to think. He's going to enter with a 6.09 ERA. Not looking too good. And like you said, just trying to get some outs here. Just get through this here. Give your team a, a chance at this point. Uh, I mean, it's the deficit continues to grow. It's a five-run ball game right now. But again, the way the offense has been, you don't want to rule out any game. You want to say he's still got his opportunities, but not the way he's wanted it to go. Like I said, the 6.09 ERA in eight appearances. He's 1-0 in the season. 10 in the third innings pitched. 17 strikeouts. 17 walks, though. Yeah, and this. Just reads another guy that has control issues. Yeah, I think that's the biggest takeaway, and that's why he's, he's coming in right now. Last time he pitched was July 9th, but faced the Blue Sox back on the 6th, allowed four runs in that one. All earned in an inning. Here's McConaughey's first pitch of the night. It's to Calvin Scott. It's outside. The Paints bullpen is just having a rough one. Seeing some of those chairs out there without occupants as there is double barrel action now. You might throw everybody tonight. <laughs> How to get those pitchers some jerseys? There's a coaches some jerseys, excuse me. Yeah, right. Really. Them warming up. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. Some of these guys aren't too old, these coaches. You know, look at Cody Harold. He's about 24. Yeah. So not too far removed from playing. 2 0 count. Forbes is a uh, year older than him. So there you go. Both young guys. 3 0 count now. McConaughey picking up right where Combs left off. Just not hitting the strike zone. Scott, it's not like Scott the umpire. mind. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like the umpire can help him no. out either. None of these are close. Just like that one to the backstop. <laughs> Jeez. Scott doesn't even take the bat off his shoulders and he'll draw an RBI walk. Yeah. And now James Meeker's coming up. It's 11-5. As coming in to score is Parks. I, I thought the Blue Sox might bat around last inning, but they were, you know, batter short from sending all nine men to the plate, but they're getting close here with only one out, unless it's a double play they're going to do it this inning. Well, here's James Meeker with the bases loaded, just one away, 11-5 the score. Meeker takes a called strike from McConaughey. Well, we talked about it before, but a heck of a day for James Meeker overall. The five RBIs, two home runs. Only Blemish has been hitting into a, a double play. A little foul one off here. Boy, wouldn't that be a cherry on the night if he could? I, I don't know if anybody in our in our team history has ever had three homers in a game. We'd have to look into the record books nah, for that I'm one. I don't fairly, think so. Fairly positive that's never happened. Wow. In fact. There hasn't been very many two homer nights. 
And the 0-2, Meeker takes. Well, that was one where he could have helped him out. Pitch outside. Got a bit of a walk party here this inning. 1-2, ground ball to second. This is, this is amazing. This is going to be a double play to end the inning. Meeker's grounded into two double plays, and he's hit two home runs tonight. But the Blue Sox do get two more, or three more, I beg your pardon, on one hit. That was a homer by Ferguson, and then a whole bunch of walks. They'll leave three, but we'll go to the eighth with the Blue Sox ahead 11 to 5. De Derek West is going to come in and pitch for the Blue Sox here in the eighth inning. Jamie Switalski goes one inning. He did not allow a run. He did not allow a hit. And he struck out one. No walks as well. Derek West from University of Pittsburgh, native of the state of Florida. It is on the mound, and he will get a hard hit ball to second, but Maglione with good range gets out there and gets the ball to first to retire Picnic for the first out. Picnic's had some bad luck here tonight. He's hit the ball hard a couple times and got nothing of that. Yeah, he had that sacrifice fly. It was hit pretty well, but well, not deep enough. But, yeah, you are getting some good contact today, but... Now batting number 35, right field. You're going to need some luck Newsom. going forward, are they? Chillicothe. Well, yeah, for sure. Here's Newsom, singled his last time up. He takes a strike from West, a big, tall right-hander who is pitching for the first time in two years. Had um, a knee injury, an arm injury, and uh, Newsom hits a ball to left field. Carew's got plenty of room, and he's got it for the second out. But uh, yeah, well, so West redshirted yep. red the last two years and now uh, just getting some action. And it's really cool to see him uh, be able to come back out and pitch and pitch effectively nonetheless too. I know he had a, a couple of, he's only had a couple of outings and he's given up runs in each one of them. But uh, he's, he's just got a kind of an effortless delivery out there. Yeah, you, you and I talked about this, I think, before last time when he last pitched back against Champion City on July 3rd, you know, his delivery is real long and purposeful. I remember he gave up a home run in that one, but other than that, it looked really you like the motions and the mechanics of it. And I think there's something to be said for that, even though maybe the success isn't there yet. But the thing is, he's got a lot of time at Pittsburgh. He's got a lot of time, you know, to make a difference there. Well, he's behind 2-0 on Aslett with two away here. 
And here's the pitch. It's a high fastball that Asla chases. Not a 2-0 pitch you want to be going after. All right, coin outside uh, and high too. Not not what you're looking for. Yeah, he came in with that 11.57 ERA, but that's going to go way down now after two quick outs. 2-1, a little bit low. So West will gather himself up here. I do. Okay. Foul ball, full count. And West going for his first scoreless outing of the year if he only pitches this one inning. You mentioned the other two appearances, July 3rd against Champion City, gave up a run. June 30th against Kokomo, gave up two runs. Here's the payoff. It's low, ball four, two out walk. We'll put Aslett aboard. But Butler ahead 11 to five here, so you know, just try to get another out. Safe to say he's got some wiggle room. Yeah, a little bit. And now Drake Peggs, who is 0 for 2, but he did draw a walk. And West's first pitch is a little bit low. Orange City, Florida native, you know, coming a long way, probably just staying up in here. Yeah, I stayed up in Probably just dorm, yeah, yeah, pit or wherever he's, apartment he's living, but then just making the easy commute out here to Butler. Yeah, he uh, came to the team early in the summer, but was not cleared to pitch yet, so he just kind of hung out and, okay. you know, got to know the guys and then finally got cleared and got a chance to pitch for the first time on uh, June, July 3rd. No, oh, June 30th. 30th. June 30th. Boy, yeah. What a relief that must have been. Yeah. You know, just to finally get out there again. Going through two rehabs in two years. Boy, oh man. That'd be tough. 1 0. Fouled off. That's a skimmer over the field level section. Just over the party deck on the third base side. Whew. One one, ooh, got him with a big curveball way out in front. He hadn't shown that much, and he shows no. up there and gets pegged to pegs to swing through it. And you know, a lot of times when guys come back from injuries, especially the long-term ones, you don't want them throwing too many off-speed things. You want to just pump those fastballs, get that arm loose again, almost warmed up. He goes with the fastball here, misses on the shoe tops. Well, you know, as your arm gets you know loosened up more and more with more outings, you're going to be given the green light on some of those breaking ball pitches. And that, boy, that curveball looked great though, a couple pitches ago now. Yeah, I absolutely did. Here's the 2-2. He goes to the curveball again and gets him for strike three. And yeah, nice inning out of Derek West. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left. We're going to go to the bottom of the eighth with Butler ahead 11-5. It's time for each and every one of us to face a very troubling fact. There exists a significant heroin and opioid epidemic in not only Butler County, but elsewhere across the country. I'm Rich Goldinger, the District Attorney of Butler County. This is my backyard and yours too. Together, we can work to eradicate the high-level drug dealers that supply these drugs to those using them. Heroin and opioid abuse does not discriminate. Users come from all economic backgrounds, are male and female, it may be teenagers or middle-aged adults. With your help and in conjunction with the Butler County Drug Task Force and the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, we can target those dealers who bring this poison into our county. Please report any suspicious activity to your local law enforcement agency, the Pennsylvania State Police, or to my office. This is our ballpark. This is our county. This is our backyard. Let's all say, not in my backyard. Please enjoy tonight's Blue Sox game.
Ready to go here in the bottom of the eighth. Butler enjoying an 11 to five lead. 12 hits tonight for Butler. Seven for the um, paint. One error for Butler, none for the paints. McConaughey looking to try to hemorrhage things here for the. Keep it where it is. Yeah, well, Gonzalez with a deep fly ball to left field. Going back to the wall and off the wall. And now it bounces away from Cal's out there. And it'll be a stand up double for Ray Gonzalez here to start the eighth. Third baseman, Ray. Gonzalez. Had to watch that one all the way to see if it would just make it out, but second time that I've seen a double just hit the very base of the wall. Balls that are playable, but that, but like we talked about, it's just so far distance to get to the wall. Didn't quite get out of the park. Mm, brings up Ferguson. Homered, of course, to break. Set a sing new single season. Home run record for the Blue Sox at 12. Yeah, I'm gonna take high. Boy, I have to say about maybe 10 games in was when I really felt like he had a good chance at breaking it. You know, your first couple you see a guy hit, hitting her home runs, and you think, well, that's, you know, that's expected. They're gonna do that, but you know, maybe you're gonna have your hot streak, but then he just kept doing it. And you kept thinking, he's so close already that it's very possible he could break it. And look, he already has. Yes, and now it's 2-0. So he'll be seeing probably something good here. Although that's not guaranteed that given the control issues from the Chillicothe bullpen good here point. tonight. And a lefty-lefty matchup to watch here too. Mm, he does swing and fouls it off. Going for the cars. We got a little bit of a pink sky behind the um, yeah, the sunset looks pretty yeah, nice today. The, the sunset. So they, I think what they said, pink sky at night is uh, sailor's delight, right? Uh, I like, like the sound of that, but I've never so heard that, that before. That, that, that <laughs> I think that means that uh, the weather will be better tomorrow. It's been pretty nice the last couple of days. Once it hasn't been raining, like we talked about, the humidity's really gone down. I just know we get into the meteorology segment of the broadcast. But yeah, well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's an 11 to 5 game, so. That, that, uh, my brother uh, went to Penn State for meteorology. Oh, did he? Okay. So, so I like to think. Pass I, some of that to you. I like to think I. I, uh, I oh, <laughs> strike call here. I like to think that. Um, uh, you got some of those genes. Well, I don't know about that. Just uh, <laughs> I like I like to talk about the weather because I know he's probably listening. Okay. Look, and and uh, it drives him nuts whenever whenever I talk about the weather. <laughs> I know as much as the guys on television is what I always say. Called strike here for a strikeout. Ferguson goes down and one away. Number three, the center fielder, Stephen Merconjo. Stephen Merconjo has had a, well, he's had a pretty good night. Two runs scored, a walk, a single. And he takes a strike here. You know, after Gonzalez's double to start this inning, Marconch is the only Blue Sox player to not have a base hit. So looking to end that. Yeah, yeah. He, I, I read Paven Park's line. He's yeah, he's the only guy with the, but he does does have a run scored. I got that walk um, an inning ago, and then one of several, <laughs> one of four for the Blue Sox. Then you also throw in that hit by pitch, but. Mm -hmm. It's so funny, looking back at the last inning for the Blue Sox, three runs, one hit. First batter of the inning was the only hit, but they sent eight men to the plate. <laughs> yeah, you're right, yeah. It Just the way she drew it up, right? Yeah, well, as they say, without really any type of explanation, that's <laughs> baseball. That sure is. Here's a pitch. It's low to Mercondra. Conjure pops one out of play to stay alive. Nice crowd on hand, expecting a very big one tomorrow with the uh, bobblehead giveaway yeah. and fireworks. If you're coming tomorrow, come early. First thousand fans get that baby ox bobblehead. Yeah, it's very nice. We saw got them in today. Uh huh. And uh, just in time. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow. 
Just got him today. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Kind of close. Well, <laughs> it was a well planned out okay. uh, ordeal. I mean, I'm going to say, what happens if we get him at 4 o'clock tomorrow? Or, you know, what happens? What if that is? Hand, what him, hand him off the truck, I guess. Just right to the gates, right? Oh, boy. Be a good one tomorrow. Should be a big crowd. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's it and and um, we got to check them out today. The bobbleheads are very well done. That's good. What company? Do you you know what's that one? Because I know. Uh, I wonder I if it's a similar one with the pirates use for theirs. I do not know what it was. I just know that it's here. Thank thankfully. I'll tell you <laughs> what, Jared. I I have so I call like bobbleheads. I've got so many, and I got this one shelf. It's three rows deep of just pirates players. Oh, yeah? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Since I think I've been since '07. So about you know this will be the eleventh year that I've been doing it. 3-2, ground ball through the hole for a base hit. Gonzalez will be held at third, and runners on the corners with one out. But there we go. Everyone's got a hit now in the lineup. That's right. Yeah, he completes the, the, the cycle, I guess. <laughs> Perfect nine for everyone. Yeah. Paven Parks. We're going to keep it going here. Why not? They got a play in the bank, but... Never hurts to have a little bit more. To add to your savings, you know. Burke's got on twice in the last two innings. I've been those two times. Yes. But who hasn't gone on in the last two innings? That's true, actually. You know, I, uh, everyone's gone on at least once. Yep. Parks up on the infield. And second baseman. Peggs has it now for the second out. Second baseman, Boy, that sky is not favorable at all, though, no. for balls. I was watching that go up there, and I lost it for a moment. You got some clouds out there, some lighter than others. The way that popped, it was just kind of caught in between there, but Peggs had no problem with that one. As I say, that more lights come on to the park. <laughs> yeah. Well, Maglione was hit by a pitch last time. He had a, he's had a good night. A couple of hits. He's behind the fastball here. Long blast inning now. I'm sure he didn't enjoy that as much. No, you're right. But at the time, that loaded up the bases, so it turned out to be pretty good. He was the only guy who at that time when the bases were loaded didn't come around to score. Yeah, but he made it all the way there to third. Got to third. He was close. 0-1 outside. Nice for Maglione to have a couple hits after the last three games he's played and had none. Oh my goodness. Hit the hit down. No, it did hit somebody out in the paint's bullpen and it hurt them. Look a funny bounce. Hard to see the number, just looked it it's a stinger. Yeah. That hurt. It nearly hit Cody and Gonzalez. And I think they were kind of blocking the view of the bullpen. And I don't know if that guy was just scared or he got hit by it, but he well, seems you look to be at the, okay. The angle here where the seating area juts out far enough that kind of blocks a little bit of the vision for the bullpen. I think if you're the far end of that, obviously you can't see it too well on the broadcast, but the far left of the bullpen where they're sitting, you know, that, the pitcher cannot see home plate. No. So no. some of them, they're at least having a blocked view. Maglione strikes out. And that will end the eighth. But the Blue Sox will in take an 11-5 lead into the ninth.
Ty Black will pitch the ninth year. 11-5 uh, cushion. Trying to close it down here tonight. Three he'll face are Lambert, Hall, and Roberts, the top of the order for Chillicothe. Only the third appearance of the season for Black comes in with a 4.90 ERA. Does have one save in three and two thirds innings pitch, four strikeouts, three walks, one hit. And you know, look back, he, the only time he gave up runs was against Champion City back on July 3rd when he last pitched. They were both earned in an inning. He's tossed two and two thirds scoreless, his only other appearance on June 27th against the West Virginia Miners. We've kind of seen with this Blue Sox team, you know, Cody Harrell, the manager, doesn't really care about having a closer at all. And I know this isn't a save opportunity, obviously, but we've noticed that a lot of anyone will get a save. It almost doesn't matter, which I don't mind at all. I, I think in a lot of ways having and labeling a guy a closer is more detrimental than beneficial. Well, I think part of it is um, maybe last year we had that guy in Kyle Zurich. He, 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 they knew – Mm -hmm. He, because he was a closer in college, they really didn't have a closer come in in college, like a college closer this year, mm -hmm. and so it's kind of committee type deal. But everybody out there is kind of, uh, you know, bull bullpen, uh, either e either the bullpen guys or their starters that had a lot of True. innings. So, I don't know. L let me ask you this: Do you think the final three outs are that much more difficult to get than the first twenty-four? Uh. In a way, I want to say it does, but I think sometimes too It's all situational. Just that's, like that's anything true. else. Uh, like true. It's 1-2 here on uh, Lambert. Black's delivery is high. But, yeah, so, like, yeah, bottom of the ninth one-run game, yes. Okay. But so you could say the same thing in the seventh. Base is loaded two outs. Exactly. It's all about the leverage. I think so, too. It's your best reliever in the toughest situation in the game. You know, whether that's the seventh, the eighth, or the ninth. And if you get to the ninth with him there, then yeah, go for Might it. as well, yeah. If you've gotten that far, toss him in there. But I don't know. I think too often teams handcuff themselves. I, I look at a team like the Cleveland Indians. They showed it last year. Their best reliever is Andrew Miller. Cody Allen might be the closer, but there's no doubt Andrew Miller's the best pitcher on that team. Yeah. And I think it's good how they use him in that sixth, seventh, or eighth inning rule. Here's the payoff. It's low ball four, and uh, Lambert will lead off with a walk. Well, another thing is... They, they're an American League team, so they can kind of afford they to do can, that a little bit yeah. more than a National League team where, like, like the Pirates, for example, have been using uh, Felipe Rivero in the eighth and ninth at times. Yeah, he's got a lot of four-out saves recently, especially. But you're right. Yeah, I think that with having to balance how you want to use those pinch hitters around it, too, which is certainly a big part of game planning for the National League. Black's delivery is outside to Hall. Hall on the night is one f two for four. I beg your pardon. He's gotten hit the last two times he was up. Here's the one zero. -oh. It's outside. Black is having a little bit of trouble finding the old zone here. Command issues, yeah. And when you're up by six, you don't want to be walking, guys. No, just because there's no need to add any more base runners. Like we said, a, a six-run lead, but you give them too many free passes, it's not going to make your life too much easier. And and, of course, you know, Golikowski behind the plate knows we don't want to use another pitcher, too. Let's just keep it right where we are. All right, 2-0 upcoming from Black. He'll check first. I wouldn't imagine any runners would be going in this. And called strike here. Well, I, there's no reason for Chilkoffi to send anybody down six. No. There's no point. There's really not even a point to holding him on. Swing and a miss here by Hall. Old habits die hard. <laughs> you know, yeah. you just you stick with it. You're used to doing it. You're Ferguson. If you don't hold him on, he will take second. Yeah, but, That's the yeah. but you're right. It doesn't matter. This run really doesn't matter. But maybe it's just a pride thing, showing some confidence to your pitcher. Well, fouled off by Hall to stay alive. I think maybe that's a little bit showing them. Yeah, no matter what the score, you know, we're still with you. Let's get through this. I guess I'd rather th I, the, the argument. The other side is you you play your your normal defense. Exactly. To not you're give up an easy no, base hit yeah, there. You're right. No hole there. It's a little bit of the mental side right now. Normally, I would agree, and I see that case for sure. But it's a and unique opportunity. Two two. Ooh, a little check swing roller. That's a fair ball up the line. Ferguson 
is going to dance around with Hall with that tag of mouth. That's a ball hit so lightly. You want that to stay fair because that's such an easy out. Yeah. You know? Sometimes you let those go because you're afraid they're too close. But that one, well, that's an easy out. Just tag them out. But well, one away for Black here goes to here. Pitt Johnstown, native from Bedford, native of Bedford, Pennsylvania. Stop along the turnpike. A little ways up the yeah. road, but yeah. not too far, relatively speaking. I think Bedford's uh, 99, the exit 90. That's right. Interstate 99 and uh, the turnpike. Passed it a couple weeks ago on my way back here, but. Called strike, 1 0. Or, pff, not a called strike, a ball. Oh well. One or the other. Yeah. Well. <laughs> you got a 50 50 chance. Yeah, so you can't blame yourself too much. Hard hit grounder, pass Ferguson, fielded by Maglione. Throw to first, Black is. There, but he's called safe. Good Lord. Let's see that one again. That's a that's a hard one to argue. This well, no, Cody's gonna argue it. He's just gonna ask. He's gonna ask. He, he clearly beat him there. Roberts, well, wait, the, I'm waiting. Put it in the scorebook. Watching here. the replay right now. The flip over. Yeah, they beat them. It was mm, close. Yeah, that, that's an easy out. If they had the... Th that is another situation. Either you got it or you don't here. No discussion. Just he's safe or he's out. You didn't see it? Yeah, they didn't see it. He's safe. That's a bad, bad call, but... But you're right. There's no need to have a discussion no. if you're not going to consult video replay. This is what bugged me about Major League Baseball before they started doing it. The manager arguments and the discussions was ridiculous. To reverse a call based on what did you see after already making a call is heinous. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why that's why I'm fine with video replay. It does take time, but at least you're getting the calls right. Now, Ty Black, you're just going to put that out of your mind. You're still up by uh, yeah, six-pack here. You're one pitch away from getting a double play and getting out of here. Pitch inside to Cowles. Ferguson usually able to make a play like that, just missing on that one. Even if he gets up and goes back to first, it's... It might not. It might not have been as close as it was. No, but yeah, he I think beat him by a full step. You're right. You're right. <laughs> it wasn't like it was a bang bang play. He just botched, oh, no. botched it. I'm crediting Black though. I'm saying Black yeah. going over first would have been a much better play than Ferguson trying to get back up after that. So he wouldn't have made it in time, or he would have interfered. Oh yeah, throw. for sure. Maglione, I gotta give him credit. He did a great job going back behind mm -hmm. Ferguson to. He went a ball. long way. Black misses with three straight here. I, he's, he's, I think he's letting that bother him a little bit, and he just hard yeah, not to. Yeah, I know, but uh, that's why Gulakowski's going to go out, and also Gonzalez. He's got a pair of catchers talking to him here. <laughs> why not? What's better than one catcher? Two. You know, they both know what to what to say in a situation like this. But here's the thing: if you're black right now, you know what you're looking for: double play ball. Get yourself out of this jam and end the ball game. Yeah, for sure. Anything will work. Uh, I guess in 3-0, Cal's is not going to swing. Because you want base runners. If yeah. you're going to come back in this thing, they would need to clear the bases twice to do it, though. Well, that's that's a good point, but <laughs> rallies always start somewhere, right? Starts yeah. with one base runner. 3 0, it's called a strike. I think it'll probably take again here. I don't know what the mentality is here. You let him swing. I always thought when you start out 3 you take the next two no matter what. Yeah, he does. Ball four. Base is loaded here. Two walks on the inning now for Black. Now batting number 17, Dalton Bollinger. Now Dalton Bollinger. Is 0 for 4 tonight. Paints with the bases loaded here. This is Ty Black's delivery. Swing and a miss on a fastball on the outside corner. So Kulikowski pointing right back at him immediately. So that's the first pitch strike we needed right there. It was a spotty one. The right too. spot, too. Yeah. He hit everything correct there. 0 1. Fastball low. Yeah, he's giving him the exactly. hey, calm yeah. down. Yeah. 
you want that fire from the pitchers, but you know, Golikowski had a good job with the constant communication. You'd rather have too much than too little. Lax 1-1, one, one. low. Tell he's just frustrated out there. He's looking down a lot, takes his hat off. Thirteen Good. balls thrown by Black too. Two one to the backstop. Runners stay put. Black just cannot. It's almost like he's having a hard time controlling his emotion himself out it's there. It's like we said, the runner reaching on the what should have been the put out at first base, you know, Roberts, now he's at second. It, it's something that stings with, it sticks with you. Even in a game like this, you, I mean, we've talked about some, a lot of these guys who are coming inside, they're only making their third or fourth, some first appearance of the summer. And they've got to prove themselves a little bit. Sure, in the long run, this summer league may not matter for them, but it's opportunities to improve, and that's what they're really concerned about overall. Here's the pitch. It's a hard hit grounder to third. No, on to second for one. On to first. And they got a double play around the horn to end the game. Blue Sox are winners tonight. They've won three in a row here against the Chillicothe Paints. They win 11 to 5 here tonight. Now I'm going to head down for the post game interview. Joel's going to take you through the uh, ball game here tonight, and then I'll be back up to finish it off with them here this evening. Absolutely, yeah, Jaron's gonna talk to our player of the game. Oh, this one, we got a lot of candidates. Got a feeling it's gonna be James Meeker, though, the way he went in this one, but what a day it was for James Meeker. Looking ahead at what he did in this ball game, three for five on the day, two home runs. Both of his runs, they scored, hit five RBIs in the process. He was a single RBI away from tying the Blue Sox single game RBI record of six, and he was three away from tying the Prospect League single game record of eight in a single outing. But nonetheless, Blue Sox winners, 11 to five tonight. They've won three of four against the Chillicothe Paints. They're gonna play him again tomorrow night right here at Kelly Automotive Ballpark and can look to continue their hot run of late. Blue Sox have now won seven of their last nine and in the process have moved up to second in the Eastern Division, looking to make a move into the playoffs. Top two teams in both divisions will battle in the postseason, so Blue Sox have put themselves in a favorable spot to do so. Looking at some of the other big news from this game, Patrick Ferguson hit his 12th home run of the season. Not only is he now atop the leaderboard in the prospect league, but now he has the record for the most in a single season by a Blue Sox player. So you know, interesting to see that for Ferguson, as right now, Jaron Steele talking with the player of the game, James Meeker. We'll get the words from those in just a moment. Looks like he's about to get that the Gatorade bath. <laughs> Love to see that. Jaron and I talked about that earlier. The unity of this team has really picked up lately, and that's one of those things you wonder. Winning can really just, it cures everything. Any rifts that may come from struggles early in the season kind of seem to go away as you keep winning. Unity builds up in the process, and as a result, you really see what the Blue Sox are doing right now, and they just keep winning overall. They improved to 21-17 and 17 on the season. Now two games out of first place, looking to do some damage. And they're ahead of the champion City Kings just ahead of them. A team who Butler has struggled against. Didn't get their first win against the champion City until last week. They actually took two against them. Something that Butler's going to have to look to do down the road a little bit more if they hope to you know, maybe get a shot at winning the division. But, you know, doing something else. But it's going to take some time to do that. As we mentioned, Blue Sox after tonight will take on Chillicothe again tomorrow. Then they have three against Champion City starting this weekend. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday against them out at Davidson Stadium. Three big games there, though. Looking back into how this game went, though, for the Blue Sox, it was tied up after five innings. Then you look into the bottom of the sixth. That's when the Blue Sox did all their damage, scoring five runs on five hits in that one. The big blow was the two RBI double by Ben Carew with runners at second and third. Brady Gulikowski followed with a double to switch places with Carew. And a couple batters later, James Meeker drove Gulikowski home run with his second home run of the day. That home run by Meeker was the second of the day for the Blue Sox, too, because I mentioned Ferguson hit his in the seventh, an inning later. 
four home runs by the two teams combined as Jaron steals back now to rejoin us. Boy, Jaron, that's back-to-back -back days now, these Gatorade bats. I kind of just said a moment ago, winning seems to cure everything, doesn't it? You know, oh, yeah. We talked about before, the chemistry of this team is is fantastic right now. I got ourselves a good ball club here in Butler. 21-17. 21-17 um, on the summer, and uh, three in a row in two days. Gets to do it again tomorrow. Yeah, same team, same place, same, same time. Yeah. But it's been a really good streak lately for the – for the Blue Sox, I was just saying seven of the last nine wins, now 10 and eight at home. This is five straight wins here at Kelly Automotive Ballpark. So starting to build up that, that home field advantage in a lot of ways, and that's that's huge going forward. But as I was just saying, you know, looking ahead a little bit, I'm sure we'll talk about more tomorrow, but as good as the Blue Sox have been, you know, beating up on some of these lesser teams, you know, you got the big dog coming up this weekend in Champion City. That's the big one. But for now, we can bask in this. Yes, we can. Uh, we'll. Do it again tomorrow at 6.35. Probables for the game will be Harvey for Chillicothe and Nick Bucci for Butler. Time of the game tonight, 2 hours and 47 minutes, and Butler is an 11-5 winner. Joel, great job as always. We'll do it again tomorrow. Uh, for my producer, Thank Allison Schubert, I'm Jaron Steele. Have a good night. Talk to you tomorrow at 6.35.